everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I am Mike Delicio. Hello. And I'm Roy Kennedy. Welcome to the final stretch of the yes. Winter Spectacular 2020. Although, it's a stretch here. We mm -hmm. got three hours of goodness for you here. Uh, well, at least we hope it's goodness. And so there's a lot of things coming up. So we're going to jump right into it. In a moment, we're going to play Fossilis. But before we do that, we're going to take a look at my top 10 cooperative games. Here we go. Howdy folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and welcome back to the Winter Spectacular as we continue to look back at 2020 and all the great games that came out during that time. Right now I'm talking about cooperative games, and this is one of the last lists I'm doing, and that's because I want it, a lot of these games are going to cross over with my top tens and thematic games, etc. But I think cooperative game is important for the hobby. I really do, because a lot of people will play cooperative games who don't play uh, other things. And it's easy to teach people cooperative game because we're all working together. I'm not going to not teach you all the rules and stab you with something you didn't know about. We all work together. And there are so many cooperative games. Also, even though I personally am not doing a solo list, many of the games that are cooperative games can be played by yourself, which right now is something that a lot of people are doing. Not every game on this list works solo, but many of them do. So let's jump into this. My number 10 cooperative game is Kung Fu Panda the Board Game. This one I put on my kids list, but it just works well. I like Kung Fu Panda, great movie. And here you have uh, Poe and the Fantastic Fabulous, what a fearsome five, whatever, the five other animals, and you work together to fight the different minions and go through missions together. Almost like a dungeon crawl, but it's silly, it's fun, and it gives you some kung fu feeling to it. Number nine is Marvel United. Now the reason Marvel United has not shown up on my top lists, and it, it might, at you know, ne next year, and I'm waiting for the vast amount of expansions. Right now, we only have the very base game that you can buy at Walmart of all places, but you know what? It's really well done. It uses little chibi Marvel figures. I'm a big sucker for the Marvel genre, and in this, you're working together to stop one of multiple villains. Now, like I said, I can't wait for the growth of this game and the more, but even in the base game itself, I feel like there's a lot of fun, a lot of playability, and this is a simple, easy game for people to jump into and get into that Marvel Universe cooperative feeling. Number eight, Apollo. A game inspired by the NASA moon missions. This is such a cool idea. In this game, you are trying to do one of two different missions. There's two missions you can play. One person is the flight director. The other people are the astronauts on the ship. You are sending them up and you're working together. They're rolling dice. The flight commander is using those dice in different ways. So you're working together. There's not complete information back and forth. It feels very historically accurate. It feels like the kind of game that they should be selling at the museums at NASA for people to play. And I really like this concept and it's a fun working together because the flight commander knows a lot of stuff but he cannot communicate everything to the astronauts. Really cool game. Number seven is Back to the Future, Back in Time. Now there are actually multiple Back to the Future games that came out this year, but this is my favorite. This is just the first movie, Back to the Future, and in this movie you essentially need to make George and Elaine fall in love. And that's what the game's about, and you're doing so with a nice dice mechanism. You're running around the town trying to get the DeLorean fixed and get the DeLorean up to 80 miles an hour while also making these people fall in love. There's a lot of cool concepts, good art. It's just a quality, quality game. Back to the future, back in time. Number six is Ether Fields. Ether Fields is a big, grandiose game, and this is one of the ones that I, I have played mostly solo. 
But in it, you're going into dreams and going through different dreams. And there's all kinds of dreams in this game from nightmare, horrific dreams to a dream in which you are um, in a mall at night or maybe you're in a coloring book, all kinds of weird stuff. And all this comes together in a really well done fashion, um, but it is meaty and there is a ton of this game out there. Number five is Forgotten Waters, a pirate cooperative game from the Plat Hat Games. They're back. I'm excited about the return of Plat Hat Games. Um, and this one here, which uses an app and uses their storytelling system, has multiple scenarios. Again, it's another game where you play through a book as you flip pages through a book and go through worker placement and cooperative. It doesn't seem like it should work, but it really does. And it tells an entertaining story with possible random effects and amazing voice acting from the app itself. Highly recommend it. Number four is Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. Another legacy game, the third in the series of Pandemic Legacy, in my opinion, my favorite of the series. It goes back during the Cold War, where it's you are CIA agents going up against Russian agents. But uh, who's really the bad guy? Who's releasing the pandemic? What's going on? A good story uses mechanisms from pandemic, but changes them considerably. I really loved it. Number three is Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion, fantastic game. It is the sequel to Gloomhaven. It's compatible with Gloomhaven slightly. It's an introduction to Gloomhaven. Great new characters. If you want to learn Gloomhaven, get this game. It does it all step by step, walks you through how to jump into the game, and does so in a fantastic way. I love it. Um, it's fun to see, and it's just great to work together. This is another one that's pretty decent playing by yourself or even with just one other person. Number two, and my, my top two, I would not play by myself, only play in a group, but my number two is Project Elite. Now, I think I probably like Gloomhaven Jaws Alliance slightly better than Project Elite. I don't know. It's, it's kind of a really close thing. But for a cooperative experience with other people, Project Elite just is a blast. Here we are. We're a bunch of Marines, and aliens are pouring in, and we're just shooting at them as they come in. It's a real-time game in two-minute bursts. Real time, we're rolling dice, rolling up aliens, throwing aliens all over the place, killing them. And then we pause. Okay, what happened? And I love this because I can't tell you what to do because I am so busy during my time working with my guy. After two minutes, we're like, oh, okay, we push the aliens back a little bit. Here comes some more. Get ready. Okay, are we ready? Are we ready? Start two minutes again. Oh, it's so good. And cool miniatures doesn't hurt. Really love this game. My number one cooperative game of 2020. Well, if you look at my top 10 of 2020, this is no surprise, and that's The Crew. How could a game that's a trick-taking game be a great cooperative game? It just is. I love trick-taking, but the idea of The Crew finally takes, in my opinion, the idea of mum information where I cannot talk to you. And in a crew, you can't really communicate about what's in your hand, except you can do so once per each round. And that one piece of information you share is critical and how and when you share it. And it's something of a learned behavior. This is definitely a game that when new people jump in, it's going to be a little tricky to get into. But for me personally, I love this game. This is the epitome of trick-taking games. It's my favorite trick-taking game. It's my favorite game that came out last year. And it's my favorite cooperative game. There's just so much goodness in just a small two decks of cards. Highly recommend it. So those are my favorite cooperative games that came out last year. Hope you enjoy them. What are your favorite cooperative games? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Tom Basil, and you've been watching The Winner Spectacular on the Dice Tower. <laughs> All right, folks, we're playing Fossilis. We're going to jump right into it because we don't have a lot of time to go. We're only showing an overview of this thing because I want to I want to show this thing. Ooh, All right, we're going to be digging here for bones. Bones. And normally, normally I set a game up before we start our live plays. I don't want it today. I want to set it up on camera. 
So we have a bunch of bones and hammers here. Mm -hmm. That looks like an excavation site to me, Tom. Is, it that, does. is that coincidental? Or? It is not. Ooh. So we're going to, mm. you know, spread these around. I, I <laughs> shake Are you hands. supposed to put them in here? Or? Yeah, whatever. So you lost a couple here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so we put these on the board like this. All right. Then we're going to put this lid on. Does that say game trays? Oh. So we shake it up a bit. So now we don't know exactly where anything is. Then we're going to put this here in the top. Oh, oh my. And then we're going to take the lid off. Okay. Hmm. Then we're going to put four stone tiles here on those spots. And then we're going to mix up a bunch of other tiles and fill in this whole bottom layer. Okay. Like those. Doesn't really matter what goes where. Okay. I mean, it matters a little, but not tremendously. You just can't put any more stone tiles on the bottom. Gotcha. Then on the second layer, oh, here's like oh. you should flip over that one in the upper left there. That's I'm going to actually oh. put a sand there now. Oh, okay. Now that you said it, I'm just... And then, uh, I don't know, we can put these anyway. We don't need these. Uh, we need to set aside three sand oh. tiles, so I did that. I, the only rule here is we can't put stone on top of stone, which I just did. You broke the you only should. rule, you mean, Tom? There's one rule? All right, so put these on top. That's all kind of random. And then I need that and action. Stay off to the side in front of you. Right here. And then I'll put this here like this. Wait, this can't work. Oh, wow. Nelly, would you look at that? Did you hear him fall into that thing? Yeah, it's so that's, satisfying that's sounding. Pretty. All right, so we have this here. And now we're each going to put our architect in one of the four corners. But before we do that, wait. Architect. This is also. The board. Did I say architect? You did say Archaeologist. Archaeologist. On top of this board, I'm going to shuffle these event cards here. So we'll shuffle some events. And we're going to put three events. And then okay. on top of that, we're going to put some plaster per player. So 12 plaster per player. I mean, four plaster per player. So a total of 12. We're just going to put our score tokens here by the track to score points. And then we're going to take turns putting our archaeologist on one of the corners. Roy, you are... What? Green. Yes. You oh, are blue. Cool. I am purple. We no longer need this cool lid, so it will disappear. All right. Go ahead, Roy. Pick a corner. Wrong. I have no clue what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Mike. Well, I mean, does it make a difference whether it's on a sand or if it's on a... Well, sand tiles are easy to off, but they're not as good of tiles. Oh. Let's go right here because it's closest to me. Yeah, that's what I'm doing too. Um, we put our tiles. We cannot share a tile. Uh, it made a market display. We got two supplies and two tools over here. And we also have four dinosaurs, which I will not. Oh, Stegosaurus and three others. Brachiosaurus. Don't be a show off. Ichthyosaurus. Don't and show off. The other one I can't see very well. This then turns over into the different actions that we can do. I'll put it here so everyone can see it. Mm -hmm. And let's see, I've shuffled the event cards. Oh, nine random skill tokens. Ooh. Uh, go on the skill track. Take skill to get those skill tokens out. Yeah, there. here, you're closer than me. They go there. They just go face up on the little spots. They do. How many did I give you so far? You gave me four so far. All right, so here's five more. Make a supply of plaster. Done. 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 Done, 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 done. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so we'll take turns starting with the start player, which is Roy. Oh, okay. Okay, so here's how the game works. On your turn, that you're first you're going to spend four energy. Four actions, essentially. We have a list of actions that you can do here. One of your actions can be take plaster. Mm -hmm. Another action could be move one in any space, in any direction and on the board. Diagonal. Yes. Yep. See? Beautifully cool. illustrated on the thing. If you're off the board for some reason, you can come up on the side that you fell off. Um, you can also add a sand tile to the board. So we have some sand tiles already in the supply, if you'd like to. You can also slide a tile. Now, when you slide a tile, you can slide a tile you're on or one that you're adjacent to. You can slide a sand tile for one. 
a brick tile for two or clay or whatever and stone tile for three tiles will push each other so if I pushed if I did this I could push this for three I could push that and I would push everything in front of it because those are all the same type or lower like if I push this sand tile I could not push that stone but you gotcha. could push it that way right I could push the stone this way yes if you push it so that any tile falls off the board you get that tile these tiles have different symbols on them. These symbols are used to buy the supplies and tool cards, which are going to need gold, dinosaur footprints, dinosaur eggs, or anything. What if you're on the tile when it falls off? Then you also are off the board, and maybe you just don't care. Okay. You'll climb on in the future. Now, after you've taken your four actions, oh, by the way, another action you can take is you can go in here, and once we reveal the bones, oh. you can grab them bones, them bones, them clinky bones mm -hmm. and each of the bones has a different cost in plaster teeth are two all the way up to skulls are six if you find a hammer in there you can take the hammer for free um, and then you get one of these tiles up here ah. they these tiles will give you like either five points in the, the game or whenever you score a dinosaur perfectly get an extra two points or they can just give you special abilities like I can dig a clay for one energy mm -hmm. rather than two. two okay I like it I like it. I dig it. You see what I did there, Tom? Roy? I dig it. I don't it. get it. You get it? Can you uh, clarify it for us? I dig it. Like digging. Oh, goodness. Okay, good. <gasps> Roy! Oh, sorry. sorry the rule is don't acknowledge horrible <laughs> jokes. I just wanted really, that, the everyone to be apart, aware. Tom, if that's a rule, the whole thing falls apart. I just want everyone to be aware how... Here's your first player token. Oh, That's right. I got a T-Rex So, head. once again, on your turn, you have four actions, four energy to spend on these various actions. You then can buy a card if you spend one of these tiles. You do not get change. Mm -hmm. Okay. You may also take a dinosaur. You can take a dinosaur, and you're trying to get the bones on these. You need to have one bone for that dinosaur. Each dinosaur needs specific bones. Now, let's show a dinosaur in the close-up camera. So here we have, did I put one I can pronounce? Yes, a Brachiosaurus. So you'll notice that that needs three bones. It needs two pelvic bones and one ribs. Um, at the end of the game, each ribs you have is three points. But if I put a rib on the Brachiosaurus, it's worth six. Mm -hmm. If I put those other bones, they're worth seven. If I get all three, instead of being worth 20 points, the Brachiosaurus is worth 26 points. Dinosaurs also have traits. You'll notice that this is an herbivore. It is from the Jurassic period. It's got four And legs. it's got four... Four legs. Four legs. Not necessarily legs. They're yeah, look, they, they, they have two legs. I understand that you're That's calling them fins. legs. They're called something else, though. Appendages. Appendages. Yes. Thank you. My um, problem is I have a good vocabulary. I just locked it inside <laughs> and I wait, can't get it out. Wait, do tails count as appendages? No. Because if a tail was an appendage, that would be shot up. <laughs> <laughs> I think tails an appendage. All right. Uh, yeah, this has nothing to do with operation. <laughs> you don't get zapped. Operation. I thought the exact same thing when I saw it, though. Is like, there Ooh. water on the knee? <laughs> now, so when you take a dinosaur, you can, you need to put a bone on it. You could take another dinosaur later on. But then your first dinosaur, you have to score right away. You don't finish it. It will still count for these icons at the end of the game because you're trying to get sets of three and have the most of icons. Mm -hmm. Finishing mm -hmm. it gives you bonus points. So it's up to you to decide which is well, the best loop, thing to do. If it's worth it for you or not. Now, Let's go, Roy. Four actions. What you gonna do? Let's pass, 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 pass. Good. Good turn. Do we take plaster or? You so can. we can't get bones until oh, yeah, after we have sorry. plaster. So plaster comes off of this thing here. Mm -hmm. When that's all gone at the end of your turn, we will reveal the event. The event will do something or other, and then we'll put 12 plaster in the next event. We will do that after the third event's revealed. We put out 12 plaster. When that 12 plaster is gone, game and triggered. Game and triggered. Yep. Uh, what do we need for like the? So can you push things that are not on a, on a level you, that David. you're standing on? Like I, think I can't push to, that off. You'd right? be, be able to push. The yeah, one you're adjacent to it, so you can push it off. Wait, wait. He could push that one next to him off. Well, it I says here. It would have to be in the direction. Dig a tile, slide it. That's adjacent to your pawn. One space in any direction oh. you wish. Oh, well, shoot. So I can just go. You can. For but one I can't energy. get the bones out unless I have plaster. Well, yeah, but you could see how much plaster you need. Okay. So let's look. Oh, this is actually convenient using the, the screen up there. Yeah. There's some bones in there. Now, he gets that tile, right? Yes, you do. Actually, there's quite a few bones in here. Well, this is where we, we can move this. <laughs> there's two ribs in there and a tooth. Oh, wait. Is, there's actually... It's a jackpot! There's a lot of bones in there. That wow. was pretty good. 
Okay, but I need plaster to actually be able to get it. Yeah, if you yes. want to dig one out. Okay, so I can get plaster. Is it a plaster per bone? You that, better believe uh, it. It's a plaster per, no. The bones cost this much plaster. Listen, oh, them. Oh, I'll take two plaster. Then take it. That's three energy. Yep, and then I can take the tooth at that point, right? You can take the tooth. I will take the tooth. You take the tooth. I will try to take the tooth. What well, if you grab the wrong one? And you then then you luck. lose immediately. It's an instant loss condition. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Come on, Cavity Sam. <laughs> oh, Cavity, right. that's right. I still remember the bread bucket. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not okay. the bread bucket, the it bread basket. It looks to me like if he wanted to. And I have to spin this. He can buy the brush, right? What? Yes, okay, so now, okay, so now he's done his four two. actions. Yeah. You could buy the brush. So let's talk about these. Supplies are always going to be, it's usually, they're, they're sometimes they're worth points, but they're going to, sometimes they give you plaster. Mm -hmm. um, I believe the plaster comes from here. Um, sometimes they give you something that acts as a bone. Nice. So that's that kind of bone. Gotcha. The tools are always going to be worth points, but at some point on your turn, you can use a tool. Mm -hmm. So like I could use this brush to slide a sand tile in one space. You do not have to be adjacent to it. Right. Oh, you just get to do it for free? Yeah. How? What does this cost here? Anything. Anything. That's why I could spin this. You could, buy. you could. Why not? I Thanks, why not Mike. Indeed, Roy. So the new one is a heavy shovel. Ooh. Slide a clay tile two spaces in one direction, or two clay tiles one space each. My goodness. Can I trigger this one as well, or no? Can I trigger my slide sand? On your turn. So your Does turn. That, that's only at the end of your turn you can take these? Yes. They, the rules are very clear on that. Okay. Thank you for making clear rules. Mm -hmm. You have to wait till next turn to use it. Oh, cool. And the third thing you can do is claim a dinosaur. Yes, would you lab. like to claim a dinosaur? The only one you could claim would be the Diony. That yeah, stupid like feathered one. The one that no one cares about. Uh, yeah, I, no one likes that. I would leave it there if the, I were you. The, the, di the Demonosaurus, I think, is mm, the way it's oh, pronounced. It's called the Weak Saucosaurus. He's got, he likes tooths, toothies. I believe but the, the word is. are worth only one point. They're Listen, they're worth four points. My daughter just lost her first tooth ah. last night, and I don't want to say we're like any kind of schedule. Okay, come on, <laughs> take it or don't. All right, do we refill? Does it immediately, immediately have to go here? Yes, yes. That's the only it way does, you can and take it can never come off. Okay, right. that is actually the a sword. dino kiss, a dino kiss tooth you found. Listen, right. the name means terrible claw. Diplodocus, diplodocus. All right, I've got four energy. I'm gonna take this one right here. Slide that off. I can't see what bones are in there. Yeah, but we can. Unacceptable. Ooh. <gasps> Ooh. I see teeth and I see a femur. Mmm, a femur. All right. So here's what's going to happen right now. That was one energy. I'm going to take... Um, gosh. And then I'll take three... Of, well, no, I'm going to do that. That was one energy. For two energy, I'm going to take this. Oh, and then for my other two, I'll just take um, some of these. Now, looking like card buying might be in my future. I think what I'll do is go ahead and buy those that that those two. Now, we, I guess we do need That's to find out. That's an instant use. Now, it, I'm 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 almost 100% positive it comes from the supply. It comes from the card. Yeah, from the pool. The pool, the, the the plaster pool. And then I don't have any bones, so I can't claim a dinosaur. That's correct. All right. Um, okay, so I'm going to, for my first two actions, knock mm -hmm. that tile off. Seems legit. Because I do clay. I don't look, it looks like there's not much in there. Femurs. More like, I can't even think of a good one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lemur femur. Uh, okay, then this one would do. Weird thing. I'm going to add a sand tile All right. that is for a my third thing. action. What What's the matter Then I'm going to slide it off. That's such, now a, that I have such a vassal move. All right, so that's four actions right there, right? It is, but now I have myself a heavy shovel, which I will use to hit you in the head and steal all your work. <laughs> no, no, next turn. That's next right. turn. Okay. Insight map. Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness, I need things. Stuff ah. and things and things and stuff. So I could go, oh, the buying cards doesn't happen immediately. No, it happens it after you spend time. your energy. Okay. Um, goodness, I kind of want, mm. Okay, 
Where are, there's no more. How, what, how do you add a tile, or is that just a special ability? That's an action. No, that's an action. They add one sand, but you can only add sand. Okay. I'm going to add a sand. So this seems strange. So, mm, no, I'm not going to do that. Sorry. I would go uh, one, two. What a jerk. And then I'm going to do... Uh, Hey, nope, you notice, nope, not from there. Did you notice that you... Uh, Three, four. I'm aware. <laughs> I can also put a sand tile there, though. And then oh. I'm going to use my specialty for my brush to slide one sa a sand tile one space. Would you like to connect yourself to the group? What? No. You could. Why would I do that? Well, so you can you move that. to those things? No, no. I could just add a tile back on for that. Um, I'm going to slide Mike say that. this off. Oh, <gasps> two eggs in a... And then I'm going to spin this to get this sand pale. Your strategy pales in comparison to mine. My Would word, I'm ashamed of my employees. Please. Listen, you should just brush these insults off. Oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> all right. I like to apologize to all the children watching. I'm going to spin these to <laughs> For the Adults three. just have to suffer through it. For the amount of bad dad jokes you're hearing. I'm going to Listen, spin three I never claim not plaster, to be a dad. Which yep. I assume go over there. They do. To get a femur. Go for it. I bet you can't get it. I bet you're right, because I can't see what the heck I'm doing. I can get one from anywhere, right? I can get one from here if I want to. Remember you, the, you if you grab the oh, wrong oh, thing. Oh, oh, oh. Only when you're next to you, cheater. Okay, I didn't know if you had to be next to it. I have one here anyway. All right, so I got me a femur. You understand how it works. To <laughs> that was one Mike, like I think line. you forgot the uh, grabbing at wrong, losing the game rule. That's true. All right, so that was one That's energy. It's not a rule, folks. <laughs> that was one energy. Let's do... When you cover up, can you only cover up beside you, or you can cover up anywhere? Place a sand tile, and it must be in the same edge where you fell off. If you're on a dig site, it must be next to your pawn. Okay, so you, we can place one next to us, huh? Okay. Yeah, as I was say, it'd be annoying if Oh, by the way, you can't place. go higher than two tiles. Okay, 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 um, okay. 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 We're going to do this. We're <laughs> going to go. That was, I, I've only done one energy. Two. Man, that brush over there is three. Hit. Boring. Four. Okay. Then I'm gonna buy a card. No, I'm not gonna buy a card. Instead, I'm gonna get this dinosaur. And I think what I'm gonna take. Can you have more than one dinosaur at the time that you're working on, or you have no. to get rid of them? So one? if you take a new dinosaur, you can only have one in a lab at a time. I'm gonna take the gotcha. okay. Diplodocus. And then I'm going to put this femur on. Oh, one of my favorite of all dinosaurs, the Ankylosaurus. All right. All right. Nice. This this is going to be good. Tell me something good. My first wow, action will wow. be to move up on top of this stone one. My second is not action. This will be a free thing. I'll be using my heavy shovel to slide a clay tile two space in one direction or two clay tiles one space each. I'm going to slide oh. this one this way. Uh, I guess. Wait, wait. Doesn't it have to be next to you? <laughs> no, not when you're using a tool. <laughs> That's ridiculous. It's great. Whatever. You can just jump right back over yeah, on your turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Hang on. Let me let me rephrase that. <laughs> okay. Now, what did we I got reveal? a bunch of petrified eggs. Is there anything in here? Do you have any clay? That's some karma for you, Vassal. That's what you get. Why is this garbage? Pushing archaeologists off the excavation. Only, ooh, you have skulls over there? Maybe. Skulls. That's okay, that was my so I've only done one action so far. This will be my second action. My third action is I'm gonna be taking that hammer. Don't you have to oh that's free, yeah. And I can dig in tiles at a diagonal. You can stop on an occupied tile. Spend a plaster in place of a fragment. No, I don't like that. Dig a clay for one energy. You may buy a second card in there. When you score dinosaur perfectly two, pay one less plaster for hips and skulls. Mm. Uh, yes. Oh, well, there was a hammer in there. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Did he steal the hammer that you had revealed? Uh, he he might revealed? have, Roy. So one, two, three, four. Oh, yeah, four. Four. And a card. <sighs> uh, do I want that heavy brush? I do want that heavy brush. I will spend these to take a heavy brush. <laughs> and I won't do a dinosaur because I don't. Apparently, I'm not a very good archaeologist. Why did you turn it sideways? What, what are you trying to do here? Shy. <laughs> he has to exhaust it. Uh. Don't be rude. <laughs> uh, 
All right, Roy, what you got? Oh, man. What do these dinosaurs even need? Bones. Love. <laughs> All dinosaurs need love. Ah. Um, you wrecked me, mm. asshole. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, and I again, that didn't am really affect you going at all. It did to... kind of. If you had moved off it, I mean, think about this. If you had moved over here, that would... I it's, guess if you lost action. one action, it's, I guess. If I lost an action, yeah. Tooths? There's no tooths. There's those. We got to start moving the second level off so we can get dig right. down in there. Okay. I can... So just this says remove any two. Does that mean you just get them? Or? I'm pretty sure you just pull them right off. But I, 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 I will look. Uh, <laughs> that was that was an interesting stutter. Uh, I'm just gonna say you just take them right off. You know, you just take them off the board. I'm assuming you get them. Okay. One. Boom. Then. <gasps> Uh, two. Let's just make more spaces that might. No, you can go come on. up on that whole side. No, no, you're not. That's not it's the issue. Fine. That's fine. not the issue. Fine. Whatever, Whatever the fine. issue is. No, the issue stinks. I'm okay badly. with it. <laughs> the issue stinks badly. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. Slide. I think some people <sighs> should just learn. I'm gonna slide another one. That's just all free He's actions. I'm nowhere to come back to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 100. That was the plan. This is a take that game, right? It is now. <laughs> Listen, you can always put a towel Just go! on. Okay, um, um, I haven't actually taken any actions yet. Yeah. Uh, oh, goodness. What does it cost I do have to, come up to on get that side, a... Right? So you can save bones yeah, until you, you put them on a thing, or do you have to put them on a thing to turn you get them? Or you can just save the bones. Yeah, yeah. yeah but if bones you are a dinosaur, point. you have to put a bone. Uh, on. Teeth and femurs are two. Ribs are three. Oh, they come from here. Hips are four, and skulls are twelve. Ravens? Skulls are cannot be used in any dinosaurs. I looked. I didn't see one. I mean, if there was a promo that gives you oh. something for a skull, I, I mean, I. Oh. <laughs> but I don't know of anything, so no. Watch this event is somehow going to wreck me. One, two, three. I'm going to take. Uh, oh man, this. You is... have to be next to it. I am next to it. Well, you're looking over here, and you're over there. I'm looking at the dinosaurs that are nah. options. Okay, I'm going to spend four for my last action to take a rib codge. Rib codge? Rib codge. Okay. Oh, that's not a rib codge. Get out of there. I pulled the wrong thing. I guess it's, my game's over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, just you and me now. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, right. and then I'm going to I take this. You're supposed to do that beforehand, bro. No, no, no. no. Before, he takes an, uh, before he takes a thing. He didn't take a thing. What's happening? Okay, I'm just okay. Anyway, it really, confused me. That's how he. That's how he messed me up. Really the femur. Oh, that's what you wanted. That's exactly what I was going for. Well, you know there will be other well, things. Nope. <laughs> you could get this one, which is not even close Garbage. to as good. Um, so does I just pretend good. like it's I have this for good. a yeah, thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. You have it. Um, I'm going to finish this off. I guess I get my four points, right? Just four we get points. Now or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's give me that bone. Uh, it's a two. Let's look over here. So four points for Roy. Okay. I hate playing to the left of Roy. I need to be to the left of you. You know that happens a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I'm taking this guy. Oh, the best of all dinosaurs, oh. the T-Rex. I want it so much. He doesn't use any skulls. That's crazy. <laughs> he eats the skull. Yeah. True. Now we no, we got to flip over this event. Apparently. Oh yeah, event card. That's right. <laughs> Mentor visit. Start to the right of the active player. That's me. Mm -hmm. In reverse order, each player may take a skill of their choice from the display or gain four points. Ah. But who gets to do it first? Tom, then me, then you. Oh, why does he get to do it first? Because the card says so. He's the first player or something? No, or? it says to the right of oh. the active player. Oh, that's weird. Weak sauce. I think I will do the... When you, uh, I'll just take the five points. Wait, that's uh, two points. I'm getting three points. You're actually losing a point by that because you would get four points otherwise. No, no, just no I'm putting not it taking here. it. Right, but you five, you're losing two. That's three. Oh, you are so smart. You are, you are the smartest. I will just take the four points. Thank you. That's weak sauce. That's All right, Mike. Um, Mike next. next. It's reverse turn order. That's messed up. So because I took the plaster, I get pentalized. Yeah, but Correct. now you know, and knowing. Mm -hmm. Is half the battle. T R Rex, mm -hmm. American dinosaur. Mm, spend one plaster in place of a fragment. I'm gonna dig clay for that. one energy. Mm, ah. 
where I'm going to be able There's not to a lot of clay left. That's why I didn't take that. There's only like five. I know. I'm going to be able to buy two cards. I'm gutted that he took my, my little... You're still good. You're going to have to go. It's your turn. There. Take your four action. Oh, wait. Let me put some you more. You just got some clay and dug one oh. out of the ground. It's not the same, man. Twelve more plus air. Mike, your turn. All right. Uh, let's see here. So what am I need to do? I need to get up here, obviously. But I'm almost wondering, do I put a... Yo, Rex! Thingamabobber up here first. All right. I think what I'll do is this. I'll put this here. That's one action. I'll climb up here for two. Oops. I You're will clumsy archaeologist. slide that for three. And then I'm probably going to... Are there any hammers on either of these sides that we can see? Mm, I don't see hammers. No hammers? I see teeth. And more. Te there's three teeth and a, uh, a femur. femur. Okay, I'll just take a plaster then for my. It is not now, hammer time. I think <sighs> that's three plaster. Yeah, I'll do this. I'll go ahead and buy that. I need uh, that. Although, man, that's points. The clay spade. Hmm. And you said that these can, you can go three high on, on this? No, you can't. You cannot go three high on that. Okay. So then instead what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and I'm moving. I'll take that leftmost card. I'm going faster than all of y'all. This one? Yes. I get a point and I get three <laughs> plaster. Comes from that. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, I love that card. That card looks really good. Yeah, that was, that's the one that I needed. <laughs> all right, here we go. Oh, so, silly. so taking plaster. One, two, three. Oh, he's trying to build some bones. Mm -hmm. And four, I can dig a, it normally costs five, but it's cheaper to buy a shoulder. Yeah, bone. I really like that one. That's not a shoulder. I thought there was a shoulder in there. But was I wrong? That's a, a skull. skull. Okay, oh, you've you lost the game maybe? twice. There's yeah. a hammer in there. Oh, there's a hammer. I don't want the hammer. Okay, so what I want is not even there. Well, then you have to move somewhere else. Yeah. Oh, you didn't take the plaster yet then? I didn't do nothing. I, I mean, I, I took the plaster. I, I still have it. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'll just take two of the plaster. Three. And then move on to this one. Okay. For my fourth. Okay. Don't think for a second. I'm not I gonna still get to do these take things. Your shoulder blade. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't even know what you want. Here, use these. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm I don't... taking from me. Come on. I, Come I, on. I, I, I don't know. I just need these things. All right, Roy. Oh, goodness. I'm saddened by the fact I don't have a dinosaur. I don't have any dinosaurs. <laughs> That's true. Stuff. You don't. I'm <laughs> slackers. Oh, One. I'm about my stupid heavy brush. Oh, what was that? One. Don't worry. I use two. my heavy brush in the future. Mm -hmm. Three. Four. And that seems like a crazy good Wait a minute. You keep doing that what? over and over again. Wait I took minute. one action. There's. This is not the deluxe version? There's a better version? You're kidding me. So Unique I took one action shaped like so one. Just an amber looking first player token. Print it. Ammonite scoring tokens. Unique plush tokens and a whole bunch of mini This game's garbage. Chicken three <laughs> four. Well, if I'm not playing with the... Are we sure oh, good. I'm taking it from the wrong place. Are we sure that Roy can keep spamming that pail over there over and over again? It's not I can use these every turn, use. right? They're one time forever. You flip it over when you're done with them. Oh my gosh! You should have known, man. Uh, done as like evidence, times in as this evidence game. by my play. Also, yours is to turn it over too. I know. Get out of here. Where's you? Five you, times already. Listen, somebody <laughs> needs to teach the rules a little bit clearer. <laughs> um, that was definitely okay, taught. That if not on be. camera, it was definitely taught. After. Okay, I'm doing yeah. my turn entire turn for free. I'm just taking two sand tiles off of there. That's crazy. I don't know how that works. <laughs> I thought they were amazing. That's amazing. Um, I need, I need that. Oh, uh, the internet is now telling you that tools are one-time use. <laughs> Thank you, internet. <laughs> now you tell me. One. Two. Hey, maybe we should work on actually excavating the thing rather than being Isn't selfish. Isn't three. Wait, Tom how, mentions that every time when it's not his turn. Four. Wait, wait, how did you, can you push diagonal? I don't know. Can people no, not normally push diagonal? No, because that, that says extract from dig Sorry. tiles that are diagonal from you. One. Two. You know it's okay to have a suboptimal turn. Three. You know that, because I do it all the time. No, this is so. Uh, I know, I, but I'm not used to playing the vassal oh. method of suboptimal turns. Okay, Next I'm top moving 10. here. Top 
two Dice Tower employees. <laughs> okay, are you doing anything oh. else? Are you buying anything? Or are you getting? Um, that would be. No, uh, I'm. Cannon I think I was on my two, turn. Yeah. Lindsay number one. All right, so I'm on two yeah. gold and an egg. Right. Sounds about right. Oops. That is reasonable. Knock yourself off. Mm. I'd love to. You can. Mm -hmm. Tis a legitimate strategy. That's three to move that thing, huh? Man. The deluxe uh, actually has actual dinosaur bones. It's that's probably, legit. It's probably illegal. Sounds expensive. <laughs> I'm pretty Four, sure. Five. I'm pretty sure you might get in trouble for that one. Yeah. Is there a it's made of real ivory? Is there a, is there a pelvic bone? In I just, I'm just worried about how many, like the the poaching of dinosaurs. There is, like there is how a pelvic many bone there. Dinosaurs had to die to make the okay. game. It's really just kind of makes me sad, you know. So if I move here, I can excavate from here. Can you excavate from di things diagonal, that are diagonal? That's what I'm asking. Extract <laughs> from. Okay, so I can't. So instead, what I'll do is I'll go one. Oh, you weren't kidding about being a jerk? No, I'm getting this because I can afford it. You that's can't afford what I it. Want. You can't afford it. Huh? I can. I can get the one more blaster. You'll get there eventually. All right. <laughs> two. Hmm. And then spend these to get that thingy. I'll take that right there. And. Look at that, beautiful. And I'm doing this because Roy stole it from me there. You no! Can get, you can get that no, one. Oh, I could get that one, actually. All right, so that was, I went, I moved one, no, I have one, two, and then I extracted is, is one, two, right? To extract, yes. So that's three. And then for four, I will, there, was there a hammer in there? No. Are you sure? I'm sure. All right. Instead, what I will do is, oh, um, Oh, you can dig clay for one energy, which means you have to be next to it, right? Mm-hmm. All right, well, then I'll just take a plaster. Four. All righty. I'm going to use this heavy brush here to move two sand tiles, one space each. I'm going to move this gold and that one. <laughs> hey, you, you fell in the hole! hole. This is ridiculous now. Here, use this to excavate me out of there. You can get yourself out of your own trouble. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Why did it have to be snakes? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Which way did I go? This way or this way? This way. It doesn't matter. It matters Kind for of Mike. matters a little bit, yeah. It matters for Mike. Well, I, I see where I messed up my play, but it's fine. Two, three... I messed up four. Myself. Where is that stone? Is it is it over this way a little bit? What is it? The stone one. It's, oh, it's right here. Okay. I'm paying for this. There you go. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah nice. A T-Rex. I know how it feels, Mike. I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't realize it would hurt this bad. <laughs> it hurts, man. <laughs> Someone steals your bone. That's rough. All right. And now we've got a... There you go, Tom. Pronounce that one. Enjoy. That is a tapajara. <laughs> <laughs> that is a classy dinosaur. Tapajara. That's so classy. She Tapajara. performs at the Rio every hmm. All right. Enjoy the Thursday buffet. night. All right. She sings. She's at the Copa. Copa I was about Cabana. To say that. She sings the Copa Cabana. Oh, nice. Uh, we're just going to do a little bit of a one, two, three, Here, show four. Show one this fabulous dinosaur. How did you, you just pushed that. Yeah. Why Wait, not? And then I'm what? doing this. Is there a... My, oh, I keep grabbing it from here. I took the rest from here. Does that not refill? No, you get the rest from here. Okay. And then I'm spending this on this to get even more plaster. Because I'm tired of being plastered. Now, would that come from the new supply? Does no, that get, re drinking problem. Does that get refilled right away, Tom? In other words, because he's getting more plaster from yeah, that Yeah, yeah, part. yeah. The supply is here for that purpose. Okay, so in other words, we wouldn't refill that first, and he wouldn't take it no, from No, that's there. at the very end of the turn. Got it. Okay. okay. So, Roy, cool. I think you I got a bunch to plaster. show off this card. Let's do it. At the Copa, Copa Cabana. She's nice, a herbivore from the crustacean age, and she likes clouds. <laughs> she flies. Okay. Good turn, Mike. 
Where is the, Where was this card? Oh, I replaced what are you it. Doing? <laughs> oh, spoilers, Tom. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. All right. I was like, there's a missing card. I so now go uh, we do an event, I assume. It's just muscle muscle memory. Muscle memory, you know? All right, junk sale. Start from the active player. That's that's Roy. Mm -hmm. Each player can pick one card from the market, give it to the player on their left, and add a fresh card to the market to the appropriate deck. Ooh. So you give a card to Mike. Mike gives a card to me. And I give you the same kind of card you give to Mike. Actually, Mike? I give you the... Have some plaster. Plaster wow, good. I'll give you the That's cheapest fine. card. I'll take two plaster. I take it right away, right? Yep. Hey, good news. I'm getting something better than Mike got. That is <laughs> jank. <laughs> All right. You're going to get uh, two points and two plaster, Tom. Which one? doesn't matter. It, it does really a little does. bit. Look at this um, egg he has. Yeah, give, then I'll do that. Look at one. that amber he has. The egg one. No, <laughs> oh, I got... I got an amber. That's gold. Mine's gold. So two plaster. Oh, you got to be, yeah. No, he's not going to give me that. No. <laughs> He'd be foolish. Do you need that bone? You don't need it. No. Tom, that's uh, that's a really good card. You don't have to waste actions to dig. You don't. Don't. Besides, you give yourself the points unless you don't want the points. And I'll be fine having what? like a million blasts. The card you just got. Oh, yeah. Two points. I'll take those. I, should I am going to. I've been crushing in this game. I am going to. No, I'm giving Roy the bone. I can't believe you would do that to me. Thank you. I think that was a bad. <laughs> oh, I got to keep play. that card. The, all the other ones were good for him. Okay. T two points and two plaster. <laughs> That's nothing. Well, this is three <laughs> points, and it's more if I put it on dice. Yeah, no, I mean that that he. It's your turn. Go ahead and stop criticizing. This game has a huge asterisk. <laughs> because it's all no, this. that's this garbage. Was, that was, was not a bad move. This was four plaster and an action, right? Right. Oh yeah. 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 No, Tom just... And you threw me back in the pit again. When did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> that was on purpose. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. At least this I'm game is very thematic to real life. official complaint. Tom's always which throwing Mike in the pit. Which side I fall off on, Tom? Because I need to know which side I'm coming back on. No, we... Go so back to your pit. Dice Tower promos in a set. We don't. No. We, we actually don't have our promos for most of our games. We uh, sent them out the backers verse. We'll get them eventually. What the promos which, for this game? I, I guess no. so. Was which, it? which side? I don't know. That would be awesome. This side or this side? Uh, I will allow you to choose. Okay, thank you. It's this side. This side? Okay. Oh, that's actually great. Okay, so one action to come here. Two actions to get a plaster. Three actions to pull out the... You I don't think that's how that man. works. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, there's Three a time thing going on. We got, we got things we got to do. <laughs> now we're getting childish. All right. So oh, did those? you finish a dinosaur? Oh, completely? you better believe I did. All right, there's that. That's three. Rip headphone users. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, and then, so does this this get scored right away? Yeah. How does this work? Yeah, sure. You're just going to, well, I mean, you're going to get just, yeah, you're going to get 24 points for it. Okay. All right, so that, that was three actions. And then did he, just, did he just pass us on all the points? Slightly. <laughs> for Messed four... Up. I will move. I'm doing quite poorly here. You can move. Oh, yeah, you can move. Does somebody win if they get to 50? No, no, no. All right, my turn. Oh, this is so annoying. That's even getting thrown in the pit over and over again. I was able to pull one. That, that would be four. Two, three, four. Oh, are you kidding? Okay. You didn't like it. I you don't didn't like it. Like it. Penny for your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I will take this. Oh, look uh, at him wasting an egg. He just threw that dinosaur egg away. It was just wasted. But he got a tooth. He did get a tooth. That's and he got two, two plaster, too. I'm giving up on a T-Rex. Oh. Okay. You're giving up on a T-Rex. You're only getting seven points out of him? I know it. Wow. And I'm going to jump onto... Actually, none of these need teeth. I haven't given up on a T-Rex yet, because <laughs> things might change next turn. I'll take those seven points back. Never mind. I'm good. All I have is a tooth. None of those need teeth. I'll never give up on you. Oh, that was a joke. Okay. That was a joke. I need the, the tweezers. Tweezers. My excavation tools. Okay, this is going to be five plaster for my first action. One, two, three, four, five. Whoosh. I did that. I knew I wanted to do that, but now I don't know what else I want to do. Okay, um, I need more plaster to get more things for dinos. Um, I need more rib cages. There are opportunities for those things to be had. Uh, this needs that. 
Did you finish this? I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I just put that there. I just got that just now. Um, so I'm trying to do my next thing, which I'm trying to figure out. A femur? A femur? Femur? I never even... <laughs> Wait, that doesn't work. No. Oh! I got a wow. fever. Wow. Okay. Only cure. I'm going to... Uh, Take it from the wrong place. So, one, You're two... You're taking it from the wrong place, Roy. I didn't even must take this pill. Oh, okay. <laughs> two, three, and I'm taking oh. this leg thing here. Four, and that cost me three. And then I have these. And then I'm ending my turn. Yeah. That's 26. Okay. 26 points. Those are... Um, that's also out of the game. Okay. So I go up to, I was at... You're at 30. Well, okay. Um, and then I'm going to take this one. All right. And Man, I'm going to fulfill it. Three of those. Oh, nice. So does this immediately go away? I would think you score it right away, yeah. And then I go up 14 more. So mm. I'm at, at 44? At the, I was at 30? Yeah, 14 more points here. All righty. I mean, I did just finish two dinosaurs in one turn. That uh, sure seems like that's what you did. Oh, okay. All right. And you have nothing uh, else, I assume. Yeah, I got this to buy two cards, but I hadn't been utilizing as much as I uh, wanted to. All right. So I can dig clay for one energy, so I believe I should be able to slide this here, right? One. Oh, that's kind of cool. You can, can slide the one you're on? Yeah, that's I think so. I'm pretty sure. Because I said, because awesome. Tom said you can, you can throw yourself right off the board. So that's one. I'll move here for two. Uh huh. Three. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. And then for four, I will probably just get a plaster, and then I'll spend these two for the dig site map. Oh, dig site map. There you go. I don't know. If you, I don't know that you get those points right away because I don't th think we've been taking those points right away. Oh. I didn't take these points right away. So we'll, we'll just save those to end of game. We'll just make it an end of game. Your tool, your tool points and things are saved till end of game, right, Tom? Hmm? Your tool, your tool points, points end of have game. Been saved to end of game, right? Oh yeah, sure. I, we'll I, just well, as long as it's consistent. I don't know that it matters. Okay. Roy just completed two dinos on one turn. Well, I got on. one bone for one, and I already had one of the bones. I got another bone, and yeah, I finished off. Yeah, the he's bone. like basically lapped us. Is all I'm getting at. He's That's not true. Forty-four points. But it's your time, turn. Is it my turn? It's your turn now. Yes. Am I back on? Okay. Yep. Uh, all right. Well, I need to get on the ball here, but I do have a lot of plaster. You got a lot of plaster. And so end game is triggered, what, uh, after we do this one more time, or? One. Two. I'm going to take this skull here. Ooh. You got six plaster to spend? No, only five, because I pay less oh. for skulls. Oh, you paid that? Wow. That's worth 12 I didn't realize points. you had that much plaster. Three, four. Oh, come on! Where are my hip bones? I know they're connected to the thigh bone, but where? <laughs> <laughs> but good news. These aren't the bones you're looking Out for. Out you are. Now I'll score my seven points. And I'm taking a Edmontosaurus with my tooth. You're at 13. All right. Roy, can't When pay. is the game in trigger? Yeah, that's what I was. Oh, and uh, so after that event's gone, then we put 12 more there. And when that 12's done. gone, game ends. Okay. Also, okay. we have eight minutes. So, Ooh, move. let's move. Go. Okay, let's go. Okay, it's your oh, turn. Oh, it's my turn. <laughs> um, I just need plaster. <laughs> that's not helping the game go faster, Thomas. <laughs> oh, goodness. Why? I need plaster. I just need plaster. That's easy enough to do. You can just pull. I was about to take there. four almost, but I don't think that's the correct plan. Um, we're gonna go one. Can I push down here? That would be all four. Yeah. 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 Do that. Um, but that pushes that you. That pushes off. me off. Yeah. Can you? Got it. Right. I'd like to just point out that there's only one person that's been pushed off of the board in this entire game. It's me, and it's been three times. Man, I'm trying to pick up this meeple, but it's hard. The <laughs> tongues don't open that far. <laughs> I'm taking this. I'm a man of substance. So this the only I way take to come at the end of the game. I have to bring a sand tile. Ah, look. No, I don't remember. Let me look. Yeah, we've been taking those points right away. Oh, well, yeah. Then yes. uh, push me. Oh, wow. One, two. Okay, that goes away then. <laughs> you all 
officially so Oh, yes. David says one more turn after that, too. When the last things went out, there's another final turn. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we may not get to that. We'll have to see. All right. I'm trying to um, go fast. But it's got to be on this side, right? So I'll do one. Oh, I should have got a bone. Oh, can you fulfill up the dinosaur? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a emptiness. I'm missing dinosaurs in my life. Let's see. I got to see. Man, I should take advantage way. of that. Rib bones take how much? They take three. Okay. So that's one, two, three, four. My turns are really quick because I'm more. Oh, I could have. I could have used that to move to any unoccupied tile. I could have used that right away, though, right? You want to use it next On. turn? I suppose I could use it <laughs> yeah, next yeah, turn. Right. Right. But one. Two, three, four. I'm sliding and surfing. All right. Surfing on the winds. And then I'm finishing Open. this dinosaur. So 11 points for me. Man, seems good. I'm almost up to Mike. Oh, I am. I tied yeah. Mike. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and you've got two dinosaurs. I'm going to clearly be in last place. And when you get kicked off the, the, the excavation site over and over again, it tends you to You would be a down. horrible survivor contestant. <laughs> They'd be like, ah, oh, they voted me off. One. Paying two to get a tooth out of here. Oh, give it to me. Are right, you, that worked. Are you digging in my digging area? Listen. I Let's dug that to the thing, Dougie, Dougie, Dougie. Three, four, Dougie, 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 and I am Dougie, toothing Dougie. up this guy, which just gives me four points. Boring. But it also scores. We're getting wrecked. We are getting wrecked. I call this One, a candidate. Two, three, four. Mm -hmm. All right, it's to me. I want to say there was a... Listen. Oh. That's not my dino. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Okay, I'm going to move to any unoccupied dig site. I'm going to move right here. Ooh. That's one. I'm going to spend three to get that to get a femur, which is right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was two, mm -hmm. and then for my next action, oh, you can't dig. You can't. Okay, one, two. Oh. That's right, Mike. Don't even try. That's so rude that you were even thinking really of it. I want to push that off so bad. Yeah, well. How could you treat me this way? Oh, I can. Three. Goodbye. No, that's the cost two. Oh, you can only do it for one. That's right, because you can do it. Yes, one. baby. Wow, the rudeness of this man. Oh, I'm not done. Listen, don't I don't think you can be done. complaining Can't about being pushed off when you push yourself off. Well, I'm not complaining this time. As a matter of fact, I'm happy about it this time. Oh, wait, before I do that, take this, score it for five points. I knew you were taking surfing to heart, but man, you just <laughs> surfed off the side of the board. 29. Boop. One, two, three, four, done. Event. Mudslide. Start to the right of the active player. That's me. Place one clay tile back on the dig site. Wait. Yeah, that's, that's me. Okay. Yep. Um, I'm going to put it, because I fell off over here, I'm going to put it right over here. Wait, clay tile, Tom. Oh, clay? It has to be a clay tile, not a sand tile. Oh, well, he's correcting me. Give me. Give what do me. you want? I'm going to correct me. Uh, give me the amber. I'm just going to put it. Aaron Burr. I'm just going to put it here. Okay, Roy. Wait. Yeah. Just put it All right. Starting well, the last round. Okay, let's do it. Last. Can we make oh, this is it happen? Me? No, I think it's Tom's turn, isn't it? No, I just, finished. No, you just finished. I just finished. I took, I, my turns are considerably faster than y'all's, and my points prove it. You're wrong. <laughs> Seven, um, 17. I can't share a tile with you, right? You cannot. Okay. I mean, unless, unless you have, you have that, a special I ability. Yeah. Which means I need a femur, which is fine, um, but they are so expensive. One, two, three. Uh, one, two. Three. Yeah, there. Four. It takes all of this. And then five, I'll just take another one of these, and I'm going to spend this to get this boy. Ooh, a pissing on. Watch it now. What Thomas. language? 
Dice Tower <laughs> after dark. All right, I'm going to go... Someone says, I'm interested in seeing what kind of games is it comparable to. I don't know, really. It's a yeah. kind of a unique game. It's very unique. Yeah, it is. Wreck Raiders. Oh, God, God. What is wrong with relax. you? Relax. Just relax. It's all fine. Why is he telling me to relax? I'm not the man with the fine. shaky hands. It's all good. That's not even close that's, to where I was. No, but. You're, you're good. You're fine. It's all fine. Nothing to see. I here. was definitely I there. <laughs> I want to see what's over there. Is there an... Is there an uh, is you there can a, look up at the screen. What are you screen? looking? Okay, there's a tooth there. That's it? All right, I'll take it. I'm fine with a tooth. All right, so I'm going to go <laughs> one. Y'all just need to. <laughs> now he's saying my words with the y'all. One, two, three. And then I'm going to um, spend these to take that tooth. Mm hmm. All right, we got we to gotta fix this. I'm, this is going to bother every OCD person that there is, including I can't me. get the tooth. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Four, and then I'm going to spend this to slide Are one there tile up license? to two spa spades in one Can direction. Can I like take away his license? Uh, we'll license? go like. Are you literally spending this? the same thing to get the same thing? Yeah, it's also points, sir. I'll take the heavy brush. Oh, the heavy brush. Yes. It's and then I'm going to take it's this, it's this it's and then I'm going to score it right away. So four points. Alrighty, I will. It better still be there. It is. I will buy the skull. I need that. And for my first action. <sighs> and then one, I will take two and immediately spend them to grab a tooth here. And I will buy this Regiosaurus. Mm. You're not scoring it right away? No, I'm not going to score until I get another one. I mean, right, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't have, have to. to just do it like that. Um, uh, what do I need for that guy? I, I, I can it. do that for that guy. It's worth six points. Can I do that for that guy? Yeah. So one, two, three. Grab it. Get that. Okay. One, two, three. Grab this. That spins the four. And then I'm going to get rid of this guy and score seven points. And I'm going to pick up this guy. All right. Did you get your um, seven points? I need, or no, I have not. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. All right. Uh, let's What'd see. You, say? <laughs> you were at zero. You just went to seven. Oh. Um, yeah. No. No. You were. I'm saying you're at fifty. You just go to seven. All right. Um, right. But I wanted to count it out just uh, so everybody can. It count. is dramatic. More dramatic that way. Is there anything left to me? No. Nothing there. So instead, what I'm going to do. Um, oh, it only costs one energy to do that. So I'm going to do that. All right, can't quite see what's in there. There's a hammer and a tooth. So many. Oh, balls. perfect. That is perfect. Okay, two, three. Then I'll spend right away for that tooth. I don't want the hammer. I want the tooth. Oh, I had it. There it's it hammer time. Okay. Um, hammer time. I'll take wow. this, and I'm gonna go ahead and score it right away for four. Proud of. Okay, so that time. ends the round. Proud Although I probably will hammer. take this chisel. The game actually. So here's what happens: we finish out the round, uh, player turn order. So I'm, I get, I'm gonna get another turn here. You are gonna get no more turn. No, 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 then we all get one last turn. So I'm gonna get two more turns. You each get one more turn. Oh. Well, okay. it, so it's evened out. You went yeah. first. Okay. Can I get a femur anywhere? I can. So let's just be pretty simple. Femurs cost three. Can you put another dino out? So Mike. one, two, three, four. Done, done, scoring, and I got another 12 wow. points so that I don't fall too far behind. All right, your final turn, Roy. Ah, I mean, I none of turn? these guys really help me out. Yes, everyone, including me, because we finished to the two, end, and then yeah. we all get What's one last cost turn. cost three? A femur? Oh, I can't go diagonal. Um, I can get a tooth. We'll go one, two. Three, four to get a tooth. Those teeth are the hard ones. Yeah. And then that goes away. And then I'm getting rid of this dinosaur and scoring six. Okay. And then claiming this dinosaur, which will be worth four, okay. I guess. I'll try to keep, keep it simple. I'll just score it for four then. 
Yep. And he goes away. Okay, so I'm gonna go one, two, take that hammer. Okay, take five points. For three, and then um, I will slide one stone tile one space. Uh, there you go. And then I'll take the heavy chisel. Why would you not take the shovel? It's worth more points. Oh, it is worth more. Yeah, I'll take the shovel. You're not right. getting another turn. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. All right. Nope. All right. And I can't use it right away, right? Did no, we, probably did not. Did you not? Who knocked me off? I might have. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> <laughs> did you do that just to do it, or? Well, no, it gave me it gave me points, but I absolutely did it to mess him up too. <laughs> Listen, I mean, I'm just over here doing my archaeology like yeah. business and like taking my dinosaur bones back to the museum and setting up displays, and you guys mm -hmm. are just like punching each other while you're trying to brush off bones. Right. I know. <laughs> this is rough, man. I don't know if there's any way for me to get points at all. So I'll come up on here you for one. You can get one. the brush, can't you? Yeah, no, no, I, oh, no, I get that. I'm going to get that regard. Oh, I just put my tile that I owned. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm saying I don't know that I can get yeah. any more points. So, so one. That's, that's two, isn't it? You put one down. And, and then, then move two. up two. And uh, I think two plasters worth of points. So I'll do that. Okay. And then I'll buy the brush. Okay, folks, so here's what we're going to do. That actually ends the game. We're going to score while we play our next top ten. Oh, okay, and then we'll just come back afterwards and tell them. Go, 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 but I can make it not do that. But okay. That's fine. Yep. Yep, we're going to do top ten. We'll score meanwhile. We'll come back, and then we'll tell you who got second place. Yeah, yeah. Right. All right, time exactly. for top ten Marvel. Woo! everybody, this is Roy Kennedy and welcome back to the Winter Spectacular. So we've been talking about our top games of 2020 and this list is going to be a little bit different because this is going to be my favorite heroes from Marvel Champions. A lot of those did come out in 2020 but there are definitely some on the list that are from last year but it came out near the end of last year and some of the packs were released here and there. But I uh, was trying to figure out which list would be great for me to do during the whole Winter Spectacular thing, and I've had a ton of requests to talk about my favorite heroes and Marvel Champions, so here we're going to go do it. Um, one thing to note, I do want to have a little caveat here, this is not the end-all be-all best list of heroes in Marvel Champions, and I don't necessarily think I've ranked them in the order that I think is the best, but this is my personal opinions of my favorite ones. So hopefully you enjoy it, and if you're interested in Marvel Champions, it is a cooperative card game by Fantasy Flight, and there are all sorts of different Marvel super characters that you're playing against. You can play it solo or against other people, and I've played this game a ton this year. Well, let's get straight into the list. My number 10 is Hulk. So Hulk is really kind of a very interesting character because he's very much like tons and tons of damage, but he's not going to be able to help you stop the opponent from scheming and things like that. The reason I really enjoy Hulk is just because how much damage he can do at one time. And it's really cool to get those, those cards that give you lots of different options for like playing like big energy cards and doing lots of different damage. But it's very interesting because you have to discard your hand all the way out if you are still in Hulk form, which is kind of interesting. Um, but I'm very much a player that I try to play out my whole hand every single turn anyway. And Hulk, even though um, he's kind of a hard character to play, especially like in solo, um, depending on the villain, he's definitely one I like to bring out because you know it's going to be a fast game whether you win or lose. And um, so I really enjoy Hulk, and that's why he's my number 10. All right, my next one here is uh, Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel is a great character. She has all these different personas and she's all about getting event cards back after you play them. She takes a little bit to set up, and but I really enjoy the theme and the way this works. This is one of the first characters when I got it out and started messing with it, I'm like, wow, they can really do a lot of crazy things with this game. And I just enjoyed how she has all these different people that are like friends and family in her life that you can use for all sorts of different cool powers and then getting those cards back over and over again to play them, to stun your opponent over and over again, or depending on which different style of character you want to play her as. Really enjoy Miss Marvel. My next one here for my number eight is Spider-Man. So I know 
A lot of people probably have Spider-Man even higher on their list, but I really enjoy Spider-Man. I think he's got a lot of really good cards. I love that Peter Parker can give you extra resources, and then as Spider-Man, you can get extra cards when you're attacked. I just haven't played him as much as a lot of the other characters, but I feel like he's really powerful with his like swing web kick and things like that. And webbed up is amazing for like that double stun. Um, I really enjoy a lot of his cards, so that's why he's my number eight. All right, for my number seven here, this is Black Widow. I really enjoy Black Widow with all of the different preparation cards she has. And even though she doesn't deal a ton of damage, it's kind of hard to get her to do mass amounts of damage. She's like prepared for everything that could come her way, which makes a lot of sense. But I love the way that she plays as like this spy agent character and it just, you get that feel and you're just slowly like messing up your opponent and the, the villain every step along the way. And it's, it's really cool. Like the games feel like they're a little bit longer because she's not doing tons of damage, but you feel like you're prepared, which makes sense, um, as you're playing the game. So I really enjoy Black Widow. All right, my next one here is Black Panther. So Black Panther is really the one that I really started playing the game as. I played my first few games of Marvel Champions with Black Panther, and I just think he is a great character. I really love the retaliate that he has. He's kind of one of those characters that you got to set up a little bit um, to get everything going, but once you get all of his different upgrades out there, doing the Wakanda forever and figuring out how you want that chain to trigger off is a lot of fun, especially because it can be very versatile depending on the situation, but if you play him in defense and get some extra retaliate and things like that, he can definitely be defending and doing tons of damage to the opponent and then doing Wakanda Forever is to be able to trigger a whole bunch of different things on his cards. So definitely really enjoy Black Panther. All right, next here is Ant-Man. I know a lot of people might even put Ant-Man even higher on their list as well. He's a really good character, and I'm trying to not be too cult of the new with this. Um, but I just really like the way that the card flips open, and, he, and you just want to be flipping back and forth in between hero modes, and sometimes going back down to heal a little bit, um, and it's just really enjoyable playing the cards. He seems like he has really, really powerful cards, and I can see this him going higher up in my list of favorites as I play him even more. i played several games with him so far, and I've really enjoyed it, and um, I really enjoy Ant-Man, and I'm really excited to see how Wasp is going to work out as well. So, awesome. Um, my next one here is Spider-Woman. I enjoy Spider-Woman a ton. Um, Spider-Woman has that ability to have two different um, of the personas or whatever, or the different attributes, and you can mix and match them how you want, but she's all about trying to play those cards to boost up her stats, and then be able to attack and maybe unexhaust and then attack again, and I really enjoy her pheromones with the stunning and confusing your opponents, especially if you play solo, that's really awesome for um, basically just tying down the villain for like a couple turns, which can be amazing. Um, and then she just does really cool with the whole being able to play the two different things at the same time that gives you a ton of versatility and she can have some combos that other characters just can't have. Um, and then my next one here is like the character that when I started playing after I played Black Panther, I just kept playing a ton and that is Captain Marvel. I love card draw in um, Marvel Champions, and Captain Marvel is great for card draw. Like, both sides, her, her alter ego and her hero, um, have ways to, like, let you get cards, and she has tons of stuff to just charge up with all those, like, lightning attacks and things like that. She can do a ton of damage if you set her up properly. I play her a lot in aggression, so it's just, like, really just hit them hard and just hit them fast, and I've, I've really enjoyed running through the whole deck as I play her just because I draw 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 and when you're playing in cooperative mode you can be like you draw let's just like make all this drawing stuff happen I enjoy drawing cards in Marvel Champions so that's why I really enjoy Captain Marvel all right so the top two here so uh my number two is Captain America I know a lot of people maybe even put Captain America in their number one he is so good with allies he's so good with being able to unexhaust I played through the entire campaign um and my uh my dad actually played Captain America the whole time, and it was a ton of fun seeing Captain America just do all this cool stuff. I really enjoy how the allies, he can get out a lot easier than others. So you almost always play him in leadership. I mean, leadership Captain America is almost broken, but he's a ton of fun to play to be able to get those leaders out, and then you're using him, and you're unexhausting, and you're unexhausting your other guys with other leadership cards and stuff like that. And he has a super serum, so it helps him get resources, and there's just lots of different stuff that are awesome with Captain America. He can do the shield throw and knock out a bunch of different opponents, and he can also do a ton of damage himself ah he's really good really really good is captain america and that's why he's my number two 
So my number one um, of my favorite characters to play in Marvel Champions is Doctor Strange. I really enjoy how Doctor Strange works with that evocation deck. They're trying to cycle through and get the top one. You really want the, the damage one that can stun your opponent and, uh, and, and being able to play that multiple times in a round. I really love the way that you can use Wong to try to go through that deck even faster. I played when I, when I was playing with my dad through the entire scenario. He played Captain America. I played Doctor Strange and it was just fun to be able to play Doctor Strange over and over again. Um, I really enjoy uh, his stuff. He can do tons of damage. He can do lots of stun, lots of confuse. His Magic Blast card is random, but it's really fun to see what comes out. And I've kind of tweaked his deck so that he has more wild abilities in there um, or more wild so that way he can trigger all of those abilities at the same time. He's a really fun deck to play and that's why he's my number one. Um, so yeah, that's my whole list. I've really been enjoying Marvel Champions. And like I've said, this is probably my most played game here in 2020. Um, and if you need more info about Marvel Champions, I've done several reviews and me and Tom also did a review of the game as a whole. And I think my opinion has actually gone up a lot since I first started playing this game, just with all the awesome content they've been putting out for it. If a hero here you saw wasn't on the list, um, I'm not saying that hero is bad in any way. It's just not my favorite to play. There's a lot of really good ones. I'm sure a lot of people are like, where's Iron Man? I just need to play Iron Man a lot more. I know he's really awesome as well. I can't wait to see what else comes out with the game. And I'm hoping you guys are having an awesome time with the Winter Spectacular. I've been having a blast with all the stuff here and hopefully you'll watch a lot more of the videos and check those out. Well, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Before we jump into the next video, if I look at the scoreboard, it this says is a, this is a nail biter. Purple right 27, here. man. Green 24, blue 23. Woo, that was close. How many people in chat believe that? All right, so actually, purple has 77, blue has 73, green is 124. But still, <laughs> I am the archaeologist supreme. Yeah, because wow. of his, Roy won almost every majority. Got. Set to three, had all 12. It's really disgusting. And he won. All right. He won. But does he win Twilight Imperium? You're about to find out. And we'll be back in an hour or so. There's a lot of videos. Stay tuned. Here we go. Woo. Hey, everybody. Tom Vassell here. What you're about to see is us playing Twilight Imperium 4. So last week, we did a review of the newest expansion for Twilight Imperium, Prophecy of Kings. We threw that in. And we played a game of it. Now, we were initially going to record the entire game live and post it, but that's just way too long. So what we did is we did uh, confessional type things in between turns, and we didn't play that many turns. And then uh, Roy recorded the over above thing, so you'll see kind of a speed of what the game looks like. So uh, this is going to be interesting. Just as a heads up, we did not completely finish the game. We called it near the end with someone that we declared winner. You'll see as we get into it. So here we go, Twilight Imperium. Hi, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm ready to go here. President of the Dice Tower and Twilight Imperium Master or uh, Apprentice or uh, Vagabond. I don't know. Something. I'm Marie Kane. I'm the editor here at the Dice Tower, and it's time to play some TI4. I love Space 4X combat, obviously, and let's make this happen. Hey, Stephen Bonacore, the podfather of gaming. I am ready to play this game, as you can see by this. Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. First time playing 4th Edition. Experienced the 3rd Edition from a while back. And I am the unofficial reigning champion of New Jersey for Twilight, Twilight Imperium 3rd Edition. Reigning champion, yeah. Yeah, ask my buddies back there. I beat them last time we played, so I'm the champ. Hey there, everybody. I'm Mike Delisio, and this will be my first time playing any iteration of Twilight Imperium. So I'm uh, interested to see what's going to be in front of me. Okay, I'm playing the Nas Rock Alliance, the cats, because I secretly like cats. 
Um, these guys are good because they get to use the new mechs, and I like the mechs. I like the idea of the mechs. I'm hoping that works well. So here's how this is going to work. I'm, my goal is to be as peaceful as possible. You watch. I'm going to be sweet as a southern iced tea to Mr. Bonacore. But I plan to stab him. But he's expecting me to stab him. And then I'm going to pretend that I'm not going to. And I'm going to turn a new leaf. But then I'm going to stab him somewhere. Well, at least that's my hope. All right, so I am playing the Nomads. We start with some extra leaders, which is going to be really cool to try out the new stuff. Also, when the agenda phase starts happening, we're going to get like extra resources um, if we vote with the crowd. So I'm really trying to blend in with everybody. Obviously, I wore this aggressively space shirt because I'm trying to not be seen, not be a target, but get all of those objectives and get lots of victory points. Let's get to 10 and make this happen. I will be playing the Empyrean from the new expansion. What are the Empyrean? Well, first of all, you just, just call me the Galactic Emperor because we will be the Galactic Emperor after this game is over, without a doubt. And we're all about negotiation. Hey, I can repair your ships if I'm in a system with you, if you've sustained damage. I can repair those ships at a cost. Um, I can allow passage through my system, through my fleet. At what price? So what's gonna happen here is you're gonna have to negotiate with the palm farmer. You might have to, you know, grease my palm a little bit. You might have to make me an offer I can't refuse, or I make you an offer you can't refuse. The Empyrean will win, and Tom Vassal again is wrong. Well, I'm gonna be playing the Argent Flight. They look to be a bird type of a race, and so that's kind of cool. I'm, I'm interested in that. I like flying around. Uh, my goal, my opening strategy is going to be just to try to utilize any particular abilities that my faction might have that gives them a leg up in some way. So since I really have no prior background to the game, I'm going to try to see what my faction does better than anybody else and focus on that. That tends to be oftentimes a good strategy in an asymmetric game like this. So I just don't want to be the weak link going to try to use my faction's abilities to the best of my ability. There we go. I am not wearing a hat because I'm already flustered. Mike and Roy have made a pact. They are whooping. So, so we started to round off, and I decided, okay, I'm going to be nice to Bonica. I gave him some, some extra cool stuff. It was a very minor thing, but a nice thing, and we made a kind of an agreement. He says, I can have Hope's End, which is a planet I want. Give me mechs. And he, and then I'm going to let him have some empty space, which is good for him. Meanwhile, this is minor. Meanwhile, Roy and Mike are trading resources, building up their things. Everyone has a flagship on the board except for me. They both, Mike and Roy both built dreadnoughts. I'm sitting here going, whew. So I don't know what I'm going to do at this point. I'm going first. So there's that. Uh, I could take another tech. I definitely want Hope's End because I need to get some more stuff on the board. Um, and get those mechs and things. But, you know, at the beginning I said I might betray Mr. Bonaco. I, I, that's off the table. I plan to be now his firm ally, and Mike and Roy are my targets at this point in time. Their alliance is too strong. I got to try to break it up, but this was not a great beginning for me. But so far, you know, I mean, no one's attacked anyone or anything's gone on, but we'll wait and see. But I'm feeling a little bit behind the curveball here. But like I said, I get to go first, so I think I'm going to take technology, but... I might want the command tokens too, but then I give them more tech. Ah! All right, all right, all right. I'm coming back. 
All right, so first round, holy smokes. I know Mike was new to the game, but we're kind of, I kind of like helped him out getting some stuff together. We did a lot of trading with each other, um, which ended up giving me a lot of resources, but it also helped him out a ton. I didn't realize he was gonna be able to do two secret objectives, which was insane. But um, Tom and, and uh, Bonacore are kind of like over in the other corner, and I'm just trying to figure out how to expand and get the planets that are around me. Um, I got two technologies off the technology card, which should hopefully set me up for future objectives if we can find the right ones. And I'm kind of trying to work towards War Suns a little bit, so we'll see if I can get there. Um, I'm hoping to be able to utilize a lot of these powers. There's a ton of new stuff in the game, so I'm trying to figure out and keep everything straight and figure out how to best utilize my stuff. But it'll be interesting to see um, if conflicts start to arise and different things like that. But just focusing on those objectives and trying to get to that 10 points. Let's do it. Get out. That was Roy just leaving the room. Bleep Roy, bleep Mike. The two of them, they've got some witchcraft going on here. They're trading their, their, their commodities back and forth. I mean, yeah, they're, they're, they're neighbors now on the board, but they've got like dreadnoughts on the board. They've spread out the most of anything. I have to have an alliance with Tom now because of the power that these guys are exerting on the board right now. So yeah, at the moment, Tom and I are in an alliance for a short period of time. But these guys have got to go down, and I'm going to be gunning for them very soon. Roy and I are close, and there's this great system right next to him. I'm bringing my fleet. I'm going to rain holy heck on Roy. Mike's a little too far right. Roy is my target, and I will use Tom as my pawn to make sure that I take him down. Watch Roy. All right, so end of round one. We're maybe, I don't know, a little more than an hour in, and I'm going to get accused of false modesty here because I always get accused of false modesty. Absolutely untrue and outrageous, by the way. But I was thinking if at the end of the game I ended up with three points, I'd feel pretty good. At the end of round one to have three points, that's okay. I gotta feel like I'm doing okay if I have three points at the end of round one and it's 10 to win. Now, I think I really kind of put myself in a position to be attacked, which I know it's not gonna be great. I have a feeling this first round, they were definitely giving me some hints, some things like, oh, you know, this is not a bad move, that's okay. Um, I don't think that's gonna happen for the rest of the game. I have a feeling I definitely have a target on me now, uh, but that's all right. So, my new goal, is not to end the game with three points. So as long as I can continue to just get another point or two here or there, I'll feel pretty good. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be getting three points every round. I think that that probably was an anomaly, but I'm happy about that. So let's see how the rest of this game goes. All right, so let's give a recap of what's happened now after round one. First of all, I mentioned the Mike and Roy alliance that has been destroyed. Uh, Mike snuck into Mechatol Rex, took it, and he is way far away ahead on points in this particular game. Um, in fact, he put an agenda in there where he got an extra point, but he can no longer play action cards. He's winning by a mile. But Roy then took Mechatol Rex. Now, Roy and Bonagor had a big uh, Cold War going on for a while. Roy built a war sun. Bonagor persuaded him to hit Mechatol Rex. Roy took Mechatol Rex and now controls it, and I don't know who can take that. You say, Tom, you're talking about everybody but yourself. You're right. So I've built up some mechs. That's my thing. I'm the mech guy, right? And I'm, well, I was going to invade Mechatol Rex, but now there's a war sun in the way. I don't know what to do. I, 
I have zero points right now. I am losing big time. Now, am I out of the game? I don't think so. I can come back, maybe. My secret objective, I'm still not anywhere close to getting it. I need, I think, 12 influence on planets. I should probably draw another secret objective. I should take some of the public objectives. I'm getting stuff. I feel like I'm doing okay. No one's really afraid of me, so there's that. Oh, meow. Ah, ah, ah. All right. But we'll see. At least the alliance is over. And now it's kind of this uneasy... Uh, both Roy and Bonacore are afraid of Mike because he has so many points. Mike and Bonacore are afraid of Roy because he's so deadly. And no one thinks anything of me. So this will be my round to try to make peace treaties with everybody. Let's see how it works. So fun fact, we don't know what each other are saying during these things. I'm guessing everybody's probably saying very mean things about me taking over Mechatol Rex. I guess my space shirt wasn't as camouflaged as I thought. I gained a war sun this turn and jumped on Mechatol Rex, used it very successfully. I messed up Mike on two fronts, which Mike is way ahead in the points. Um, so he still has a really good chance to win the game, um, but it's still about trying to figure out those objectives. I'm going to be a target now just because I control Mechatol Rex, but at least I don't have as many points as Mike. Um, but they might, they're just mad at whoever controls Mechatol Rex. So um, it's going to be an interesting game here trying to figure out how to gain points and not appear like I'm winning, even though I'm in a really good spot. Um, but hopefully we can continue to work together on different stuff and uh, hopefully they just let me have it and I can just gain points off of it. That's probably not going to happen. People probably said really angry things about Roy killed this thing and blew this thing up. And maybe I did, but uh, I guess the footage will show what actually happened. Get out, Roy. This is not going well for the good guys. And when I may say good guys, that means me and Tom. So I ran up to Roy's planets. It was sort of should have been his, and I took them, even though he wasn't there yet. And he was like, I'm coming after you. And I made nice with him, gave him some trade goods, and we're good. And I and I used Jedi mind tricks, and I made him go to Mechatol Rex to attack Mike, and he did. Mike is way ahead now with six victory points. But Roy is now sitting on Mechatol Rex with a war son. We're like screwed. Mike's about to get really hurt and almost out of the game in that way. But I gotta keep now, I'm gonna be using my powers of going after all the exploration of all of the empty systems. I get to explore them for free with my powers. Tom and I are still totally simpatico because we're both getting killed right now. Tom's got like no victory points. I got like one. Roy is the biggest threat. My fleet's fairly big. So at the right time, I'm jumping on his stuff. I'm coming after Roy. Within two turns. <clears throat> Mike sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well... End of round three, I think. Time has become a little bit of an abstract notion right now. Uh, there's a lot going on. So many cards, so many powers, so many things to keep track of. I was able to go in and take Mechatar Rex. It was very exciting, but I couldn't hold it. Roy came in, although I want to tell you, he was immensely pressured by Tom and Bonacore to go in and attack me and take me out of Mechatar Rex. I think that was um, a little bit of gamesmanship there. Now, granted, I've got a strong points lead. I'm at six points right now, which obviously looks good, but I've basically put everything I have to get to this point. So can I hold on? Can I squeak out another four points when all of my forces have been so decimated? I don't know. I've never played this game before, but uh, it's been interesting it's uh, a lot to take in. I, I will say that. It's a lot to take in, a lot to kind of keep track of, but I feel like I've been able to get points every round, and that's what I guess the goal of the game is, right? Ten points. I'm six-tenths of the way there. Three-fifths. That's math. Three-fifths of the way there, so who knows? Am I going to hold off? I doubt it. I don't know that I'm going to be able to, to, to get back because or keep this lead because so many people have such stronger troop presences on the board than I do, but I'm going to keep trying to sneak my way in through objectives and things along those lines. We'll see. Who knows?
Ooh, what a long game this is. I'm now debating if we're gonna even finish the game, but we'll see. So Mike has eight points. I have three, and I feel like I came a little bit out of the back. I, I got two objectives this past round. I trade it with Steve to get another objective. Tried to trade with Mike, four points wouldn't have been bad, but Mike's reeling a bit because Roy is beating him up. Roy cannot beat up Steven because Bonacor has just this huge force coming. And Roy does have two war sons. Still has Mechatol Rex. I don't know what's going to happen there. But uh, I have also built up a pretty decent sized force. I still think I'm third when it comes to military strength. Although my ground forces are amazing. My robots, I have the biggest production of any player. And I just got another thing where I can get some more production. But why am I not more confident? I'm just not. Um, also, I'm not confident we're going to finish the game. Roy is getting more irritated with how long the game is taking at this point in time. I mean, we are now in hour five. Uh, <laughs> um, but I still like the game. But yeah, it is a once in a great long time style game. I'm enjoying the leaders. I'm enjoying stuff. We'll talk about this stuff afterwards. Let, let's talk about where we're at now. So this round, I think my, my peace treaty with Bonacore is fairly permanent at this point, And with Mike, even if Mike won't make it permanent, and I don't really have a way to attack Roy unless he goes for Mechatol Rex. But if Bonagor takes Mechatol Rex from Roy, then it might be my turn to go get him. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Here we go. All right, I still hold Mechatol Rex. Um, I do fear that uh, people are going to try to jump on me there. Uh, but some of the good things are uh, I have secret objectives that are going to be really hard to pull off here and there. But it'll be interesting to try to see if I can. I'm going to try to pull them off this turn. Um, one of them is I'm going to try to take, I have to get, like, give up a home system. And I was thinking about moving all my stuff away from that home system. But instead of doing that, I think I'm going to take one of Mike's home system and then give it back to him. <laughs> Um, but I have to uh, basically give up a home system sector. Um, maybe I can do that. I have War Sun, so I can kind of fly around and do whatever. But I am afraid that people are gunning for me. Man, Mike has so many more points than everybody else. And I hate to keep picking on him because I've taken three of his sectors. But you got to do what you got to do. Um, I'm just worried about everybody else jumping on me as well just because they see that I have so much military and they might try to take it out. But it's going to be hard for them to stop the amount of combat I have. So they're probably lucky that the guns aren't aimed at them, you know, and they're aimed at Mike instead. Anyway, here we go. Back to more of it. Listen, I can't even handle this anymore. I'm just going to hold this thing right here. I'm about to backstab Roy. Not that we have an alliance. In fact, we're almost antagonistic to each other. We, we have, we, we've established a border between our lands, but he's building these crazy things on my border. He's got Mechatol Rex. I'm slamming it right now. I've got I've got my flagship. I've got two dreadnoughts there, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna upgrade my PDSs, which are in the system right next to that. I'm slamming Mechatol Rex. He's not in the lead. He's in second place. I'm in third. Tom's in fourth. Tom's got a huge fleet, but he's not supposed to attack me because we've got this card that stopped between the two of us if he attacks me he loses a victory point vice versa on that mike is way in the lead but he's like diminishing he's like a a diminishing uh uh empire but i think i think he's gonna limp across if he can get one of these next couple of cards and he hits the hits the objective we're in trouble but I got to hit Roy right now. I got to diminish him a little bit. Take Mechatol. Get the extra victory point for that. And then we'll have to deal with uh, deal with Mike. I'm not next to Mike. Mike is across from me, so it's too hard. Roy is going down. All right. We're getting pretty, pretty deep into this. Uh, I was able to get my third and final secret objective. I can't complete any more of those. So uh, I'm sitting at eight points right now. I need ten. Uh, I've got a relatively healthy lead, but my issue is that I am so depleted on the board right now. I've got basically all of my eggs in one basket. I, I, I'm holding on by my fingernails, I feel like. Um, so yes, I feel like I've got a comfortable lead, but I also feel like it can get eroded pretty quickly because I don't really have any board presence and I just don't feel like I'm in a position to push. So I'm really just hoping that I can sneak out two more objectives. Um, 
who knows? Again, I, I don't even know what these future objectives could be. I didn't look at any of the, object, the objective cards before we started. So I, I don't know. I can only go by kind of what I've seen so far. There's two that are available now that I haven't um, been able, that I haven't completed yet that I think are potentially possible, but everybody knows that I need those. So they're going to do everything they can to prevent me from getting them. So I don't know. At this point, I have no idea. Uh, it could, and quickly, it could be another three hours. I have no idea. So we'll see what happens. All right, in the interest of time, we've had to call it because of uh, uh, just, well, time. Uh, Mike had nine points, so that pulled it off. I believe Roy was right on his tail, honestly, with seven maybe, not or six. I was one point behind that, and Bonnicor was either with me or one behind me. I convinced all three of them to give me a point. Uh, the very final round was very interesting. Bonnicor came and smashed up against Mechatol Rex. Losing everything, but injuring Roy significantly, I might have been able to win, maybe, with my forces. So Roy gave me a point not to. Hmm. So we looked ahead. If we had continued, Mike might have still won, although given time, Roy could have won. But then again, I could have also come back. Whew, what a game, a long game. So we played here for six hours which isn't tremendously long, right? This game is six to eight hours. And have we gone to the 10th point, figure another hour in the game. Um, yeah, it's interesting. We're going to be doing a separate video with our impressions of the expansion. And so it's just been a long time since we've taken a day like this to play a big mega game like this. But I had a lot of fun. Uh, definitely playing with people who are at top of their game helps out a lot. Uh, never once attacked Mr. Bonacore. Never even really considered it. At the very end, I thought for a brief fleeting moment, and I was like, no. Um, and I had no reason to. Um, I really wasn't going to attack Roy, but he bought me off. And then I considered attacking uh, Mike, but he also bought me off. So in the end, my huge threat of forces did force everyone to give me points. Now, I would have gotten two or three more points from secret objectives and other things. Uh, but I don't know that I could have pulled off the victory. We looked ahead. An upcoming objective would have been conquer a planet in someone else's home system. Had that been the case, I would have turned on Mike and gone in and tried to do it. I had a big enough fleet. I might have been able to pull it off. It's a very entertaining game. Uh, today was a lot of fun. And congratulations to Mike for pulling off that victory. But high kudos to all my opponents. Even though I suspect as soon as I'm done talking here, they are going to say bad things about me. Let's find out. Wow, that was a crazy game. I did get my two war sons out there, and man, Bonacor <laughs> wrecked all of his ships onto Mechatol Rex trying to take it from me. And after he failed to take it, um, based on technologies I had upgraded, it made me really good in combat. Of course, I had war sons and dreadnoughts, and I built dreadnoughts right before he could get there. And then uh, Tom Vassal was right on the edge. Tom was just about to take um, Megatol Rex. I ended up giving him support for the throne to give him a point to be like, dude, please don't wipe me off immediately. That's just going to ruin my day. Um, I was going to attack Mike's home system. I know I talked about that last time. But because Bonacore attacked me, it allowed me to um, attack Bonacore in another spot so that my flagship could win a combat so I could get a secret objective. My other secret objective was to try to lose a home system space. So I was going to try to go to Mike's and then take it and lose it, but that didn't happen. Mike did a great job with all the points, and man, he was this close to like eking out a victory. Oh, he ran up that point track so fast and just chasing him. But I played these games so many times, the whole time everybody was just sweating because they're like, Roy knows these games, Roy knows 4X games, he's going to be able to wipe us out on the board, we can't let him keep Mechatol Rex. So I had a lot of people going against me just because my experience with the game. Um, but I still really enjoy um, this game. It is so long. It basically takes us all day here um, to play, but 
Um, I think it's a lot of fun to play. The expansion adds all sorts of crazy stuff, and hopefully um, you guys can watch our other video, which will be talking about our first impressions on the expansion and stuff like that as well. But yeah, this was my thoughts on our playthrough. You want the good news or the bad news? The good news is Mike, first time player, won. Like it, did a great job. Listen to people's advice, which we all helped out. Congratulations, Mike. And now I'm going to complain like crazy. So I did what I said. I went and I attacked Roy. Very unsuccessfully, I might add. Very unsuccessfully. Because sequence of things didn't happen. He, he ended up producing in the system on Mechatol Rex before I was able to attack him because I needed the technology action to occur, which he had, so he, he did that late. So I upgraded my PDSs so I could fire in from the, the adjacent system. That worked pretty well. But I couldn't take him because he just had, he had three dreadnoughts and a war sun. And I was coming at it with my flagship, two dreadnoughts and a cruiser, and the PDSs. Just not enough. Just not enough. But the point of that is I softened him up because he was in second. He, he was going to start creeping. His forces were huge. He was going to start creeping up. Tom, who had a bigger force sitting next to Mechatol Rex, sitting next to Mechatol Rex. Did I mention he was sitting next to Mechatol Rex? Roy's there with all damaged dreadnoughts, three damaged dreadnoughts sitting there, and Tom decides not to attack him. Tom walks in there, would have taken Mechatol Rex, and then we would have had a game going in. So, Mike, great work. Roy, whined the whole game that he was like never gonna win, never gonna win, and he was the big threat. Yeah, Mike, Mike was at nine victory points, so he was right there. So we had to control him a little bit, but it was too hard at that point. So we had to make sure that the middle that he wasn't gonna get up. Whined the whole game that he wasn't gonna win, but he was winning. Tom refused to attack him to take Mechatol Rex to then creep up on him. I found this box cutter over in the office over there. I'm not sure if I'm going to cut my own wrists to take some of the pain away from this game or I'm going to go shiv Tom for not going after, going after Roy. I wanted to flip the table. Great game. Great game. Twilight Imperium 4th Edition with the expansion. Great game. We're going to do more of it. We're going to talk about it again in a, in a first look review thing that Tom just mentioned that we're going to do together. We'll have more for you there, but fantastic game. I came in last, loved it. Uh, great experience. If you have the ability to play Twilight Imperium, if you never did, play it. If it's still sitting on your shelf, get it out, get back into it. Phenomenal game. Epic every time you play it. Take care, guys. All right, well, we called it. Uh, we called it at nine points for me. Uh, we had two other players at six points. Now, uh, did I officially win? I guess I, I'm, they may be gracious and say yes. I'm going to say no. I, I don't know that I can really take that win, although I did have a lead. It would have been really hard for me to even get that one extra point because I had depleted my board state so much. I was so vulnerable. Uh, I wasn't going to win any combat. The only way I was going to get a point was through some type of an objective that allowed me to somehow get a point because I had really, so early in the game, had put everything I had into completing those secret resource or secret objectives that I had basically left myself a shell uh, of a presence on the board. But that being said, uh, could I have held it out? Could I have sneaked out the last point? I don't know. Uh, I do feel like everybody else had built up such a strong military presence on the board that if they, I was, I was just fodder. Anybody could have come in and taken any planet that I had control of. So I don't know. I do know that it was a intense experience. Uh, they call that game epic. I think that's a fair word for it. It felt like an epic experience, not only epic in length, but just, I feel spent. I'm so uh, mentally kind of like, Ugh. 
not necessarily bad, but there's just so much to keep track of, so much to think about, so many cards, so many abilities, so many powers. Um, I'm sure that there were things that I missed as far as things I could have done, should have done. But for a first time experience, I feel like I at least held my own. Um, I do feel like there's something to be said for, even if I hadn't been able to hold off and win, the fact that by really round two, I was the person that people were worried about, that makes me feel like I was doing something okay. I may have been, you know, kind of fumbling my way through some stuff and I may have lucked into some of those secret objective cards that happened to be things that I was able to easily do. Um, but it was also my first time playing against three people who had at least some experience and some decent experience uh, with playing this game that I feel like I at least did not um, mess up the experience for other people because I was just like, you know, throwing the game state. I feel like I held my own and for that I feel good. I also am very glad that I can now say that I've played this game because this is one of those games where people always ask, hey, have you ever played Twilight Imperium? What, TI3 or TI4, whatever the case may be. And now I can say I have. Is it a game I would want to play often? Probably not because of the length and because you know, it's not necessarily the type of game I'm going to come back to again and again, but I definitely am glad I had this experience and I feel like uh, it's a, a little notch in my gaming hobby belt that I can put on now. So, um, wow, that was something. That was something. And that's it, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, just kind of a, an overview, a real quick uh, look at our thoughts during a game of Twilight Imperium with the expansion. And, um, well, like I said, in another video, we'll do our first impressions of the expansion. Until next time, I'm Tom Basil, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. See you next time. Man, this seems a little complicated. How long is this going to take? Uh, seven, eight hours. Seven, eight hours? <laughs> See you guys later. Bye. Wait. Bye. Hey, wait. Okay, maybe we can do it in six hours. No. Uh, hours, are you crazy? Uh, I got things to do. Yep. Eight hours. But you were the fourth player. Eight hours. Uh, all right, what am I going to do now? Oh, boy. Hey folks, welcome to my top 10 of 2020. Now, typically my top 10 lists have historically been things that are big, thematic, story-driven type games, games that maybe I've played once or twice. Yes, they're awesome games, but this time around I decided to go and take a look at all the games that I've played multiple times through the year that have given me all kinds of enjoyment from each play. So I narrowed it down to 10, and there's some interesting choices here, stuff that I may not have normally put on a list, but indeed, all of these games have just been a ton of fun for me throughout the year. So let's jump in and take a look. So my number 10 is The Last Aurora. The radioactive dust of the last war has frozen the northern countries, now known as the Ice Desert. You are one of a few survivors that live in this icy wasteland, as the resources of the old world are now exhausted. Yes, 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 lots of theme in this one. So this is a post-apocalyptic game set in a frozen and desolate land, and I'm typically drawn to this type of theme, post-apocalyptic games and the survival aspect that they depict. And you know, they do a good job here, having you deal with dwindling resources and bandits along your trek, so you'll have to manage your crew to gather resources, recruit survivors, and improve your vehicles, which is super cool. And so the game essentially turns into a race as you race towards the finish line or the shoreline because the last Aurora is patrolling, trying to pick up survivors and you hope to make it there before your fellow players. Number nine. So I've never been a really big car guy in any way until this last year after picking up a used Mini Cooper in 2019. Now racing games are totally on my radar and Rallyman GT tops it out for me. Why? Well, the dice of course, and the sense of racing is strong with this one. I love games that incorporate dice chucking and I love that Holy Grail Games took this and reimagined the classic from 2009. Yes, some say this is just a roll and move. Yeah, maybe to some degree, but the sense of speed and timing is fantastic. I love the modular track 
and there are so many possibilities playing predefined or creating your own tracks. And the push your luck aspect, oh, I love that in games so much. And the accelerating, coasting, braking, all the things you would have to keep in mind when racing. As well as weather conditions and using focus tokens to help you bring your driver and your car to the finish line. So many twists and turns here, so many fun game nights associated with this one. Number eight, Dwellings of Eldervale. So, you know, this is an epic worker placement game, which is set in a once lost magical world. Giant elemental monsters roam with dragons, wizards, and warriors, battle for dominance over eight elemental realms. So, you know, many worker placement games have, how do I say it? Well, a pasted on theme. Not the case here. They've done a fantastic job pulling you into this world and all your actions have real meaning. But it's not just a worker placement game. You'll be doing some engine building and hand management along with variable player powers, uh, which keeps me coming back for more all the time. And of course, the miniatures, artwork, and components are simply amazing in this game. Now, it was a long time that I only had the prototype and I still played that over and over. It's just such a good game that I can't recommend it enough. Number seven is Whistle Mountain. So this is another worker placement game. This is basically a sequel to Whistle Stop, to some degree anyway. But this time around, you will be flying airships to gather resources in the high mountains. The fun here is in the building the scaffolding and trying to save your workers from the rising waters. I love the puzzle aspect of building the scaffolding and you will be acquiring new abilities for your workers and your airships along the way. You know, I've played several times and each game has been super unique. Lots of replayability here. And this might be quickly becoming my favorite worker placement game. And it's just simply a beautiful game. Number six, Super Fantasy Brawl. So you have a team of three champions, all with unique powers and abilities. You will use these abilities or cards to attack, maneuver, displace enemies, and claim objectives. Now. I really like the fact that you can combine any combination of champions when forming your team and the cards and abilities are so easy to understand that you can engage and be competitive in your very first game. No need to know the cards intimately before becoming effective in the game. And of course, all the amazing miniatures and high level of sheer fun makes this a game not to miss. You know, my first play of this game was with Sam Healy and we had a blast. I loved the back and forth and I had him on the ropes, but in the end, he did squash me. Number five, Faza. So, so aliens known as the Faza have invaded your city. Think, you know, War of the Worlds or Flash Gordon. These aliens are bent on destruction. You know, I love the nod to the old sci-fi vibe of the 50s. The artwork and theme really drives this home. So, you know, it's up to you and a rebel faction of Faza and your fellow players to stop the threat. You will have to shut down the mothership and their drones, but you must recruit rebel Faza to help you invade the mothership. I love cooperative games so, so much. And this one delivers, giving you that sense of high pressure and urgency. Plus, there are eight characters with different abilities to choose from. Like so many games like this, you really need to put together an effective team to save the city and the world. Number four, Fallout Shelter the Board Game. So I'm a huge fan of the video game series. And of course, that theme, post-apocalyptic, appeals to me. But, you know, I'm also a big fan of the mobile app. And they have managed to nail the same experience from the app and put it in the board game. You know, this is a worker placement game where you run around doing various tasks and managing resources throughout the vault, trying to keep your people happy and building out your level of the vault, dealing with threats and power outages. I really like the threat cards and how they overlay the areas of the rooms. And there are lots of weapons and item cards to help you on the way. Now, it's easy to set up and play, and it's in continuous rotation at my house. Number three is Project L. If you find me at a convention, I will gladly sit and play this game with you all day long. The main goal of this one is to simply use your puzzle pieces to build out your puzzle. But along the way, you have to build out your puzzle engine of pieces and this is key. I really like the Zen quality of this game and how easily it is to play and teach new players. 
but the quality of the components and the tactile feel really gets me. I love it so much. And it has probably been my most played game in 2020. And now with the new expansion on its way, Project L Finesse, this will give you even more ways to play. I don't really play a lot of solo games, but this one I play while watching movies or over lunch. It is just so, so good. Number two is Too Many Bones Splice and Dice. So Too Many Bones is easily in my top five favorite games of all time. I love all the expansions and high level of components in this game so much. But Splice and Dice allows you to go to the lab and basically build your own creatures or tyrants to fight against. It also brings new tyrants encounters and new dual baddies into the Bones world. But really, the tyrant creation is what makes this a ton of fun for me. And I simply love the Too Many Bones system. I realize that this is just an add-on or an expansion, but I will sit and create possible creatures all day long. And that brings us to number one, which is Moonrakers. No, not based on the Bond film, but it does take place in space. You will be doing ship and crew building. Yes, this is a deck builder. And building alliances with other players to complete contracts is absolutely key. Well, temporary alliances anyway. You will be using your cars to fulfill these contracts, thrusters, shields, weapons, reactors, and crew. In the end, you hope to have the most prestige. You know, I've had the best time with this game. So many great experiences around it. It is hands down my all time favorite deck builder at this point. And the final production of the game is simply stunning. And I got to play this game with Becca Scott on Game the Game, who owes me another game because she just barely beat me. Next time, Becca, next time. All right, folks, thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. And I wish you all a very, very happy holiday season. Be safe. And of course, until next time, we'll see you at the table. Hi, I'm Jordan. You might know me from Board Game Breakfast, where I define really obvious board game terms, or from the hit Instagram account, Jordan Plays Blue, where I do quickly reviews and some other shenanigans. 2020 was a really awesome year for games. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. It was so good. I was complaining with Randy and Ellen last night about how hard it was to come up with top 10 games. I wanted, I mean, I could have come up with a top 20 games and it would have been really so, a, a really solid list. So to start off, I wanted to talk about some Things that I really like in games, because I feel like my list is probably different than you know the typical BGG crowd. Um, so just wanted to go over that real quick. So one, I am most attracted to light or family weight games. I do like some games that are a little heavier. Those are more exceptions than it is to the rule. So um, I do like lighter games, family weight games, games that are really kind of accessible. I also like games that are quick and have a low barrier of entry. You won't really see many heavy Euro games, really convoluted, um, really big Amera thrash type games on my list. I just don't get them played and um, sometimes they're just too long. Um, I also want a game to look pretty and I want it to have really nice production value. Nice and easy. And then lastly, I really enjoy games that have a solid mechanic puzzle to solve, okay? So the a game that you know can have some luck but I really do prefer games that have strategy and tactics in it that give me some choice that what I'm doing in the game actually means something. So that seems pretty obvious, but just wanted to go over what I kind of like in games. So let's get started. So the first game on my list is New York Zoo. This is the latest polyomino game from Uwe Rosenberg. He did other games like Patchwork, Cottage Garden, uh, Indian Summer, Spring Meadow, those are similar polyomino games. In this game, you're also drafting tiles and putting them on your board. The primary twist in New York Zoo is that you are going to be filling spaces on your, on your board, but also filling those tiles with zoo animals, arctic foxes, kangaroos, uh, flamingos, you know, all the stuff that you see in a zoo. And periodically these animals will breed and fill in more areas on your board and then you can turn those in for bonus tiles and such like that. So this breeding really brings the step up, brings it a step up in strategy and complexity and it just really makes the game sing. So New York Zoo, number 10. 
So I mentioned earlier that I love games that have a that kind of give you a puzzle to solve. And Shifting Stones is a game that does this in spades. It is pretty much a straight puzzle game. All right. So in it, there's a grid of double-sided tiles. You're going to put them out on the table. And on your turn, you can you discard cards from your hand in order to swap the spaces of those tiles that you're going to be uh, switching the spots you're going to be turning them over to the other side that gives it shows a different color and you're hoping to meet the positioning of tiles off for one of your scoring cards in your hand it plays really quickly it's one of those games that you just you finish and you want to try it again it also has a really cool solo mode that's just kind of almost feels like a button shy game like a micro game um, in its simplicity and how quickly the solo play uh, solo mode goes so you can just kind of play it over and over again so, Shifting Stones, number nine. Whistle Mountain is easily the heaviest game in my top 10 this year. It's probably more of a medium weight kind of worker placement game, but it has a lot of components, a lot of setup, and it kind of makes you think that it's a heavier game than it really is. But ultimately, it has a really simple engine. You place one of your airships on a space around the board, and then you take its actions, or you take all your airships back, and you get to build on the board. The coolest part of Whistle Mountain is how the tiles that you're building on the board, you're going to have these machine tiles and these scaffolding tiles, and they become the worker placement spaces throughout the game. And those are going to evolve throughout the game between games because you're not always going to see every machine every game. And so the game is constantly evolving. You're going to have to use different strategies every time you play. And because the actions vary, it just makes for a really cool, um, I don't know, just the whole framework of the game is really cool. So I really enjoyed Whistle Mountain. That is my number eight. Cosmic Colonies is number seven on my list. This is another polyomino game. All right, so in this game, you're gonna be playing cards to boost actions. And whenever you take your actions, you're essentially collecting resources or buying these polyomino tiles. You're putting them on your board. That's supposed to represent like a planet, asteroid type thing. You're, you're covering different types of terrains on there with these Base buildings, I guess. I'm not totally sure. But you are the cool part, a couple cool things about the game is whenever you play these bonus cards, you're then going to pass them to your neighbor. And so whenever you take it, whenever you, and then you get a card from your neighbor also. So the, the cards are constantly rotating around the table. If you have a really good card, your neighbor's going to have it next time, and then their neighbor's going to have it next time. And so those cards are going to keep passing around, kind of sharing the wealth, sharing the love of these cards. Um, but ultimately has a really simple engine, really easy to get into. I really love it. That is Cosmic Colonies, number seven. All right, my number six game, Camp Pinetop. This is a light worker movement game where you're gonna be playing as scouts on a camping trip. You're gonna be moving around the forest, trying to uh, achieve goals to collect merit badges. It's super ch cute, super charming. It has a really similar engine to Ticket to Ride. So you're collecting, uh, you're drafting these colored cards and then you're going to collect sets of the colored cards in order to complete objectives around the game, right? And so the sets that you're collecting though are going to constantly be changing as your workers are on different spaces on this uh, grid board that's out there. And then as you're moving through the merit badges and moving through your ranks, um, you're going to be collecting different sets, almost collecting sets of sets at certain points, which is really cool. It all comes together really interestingly. It's really accessible. It's really cute. That is Camp Pine Top, number six. The Crew. It's been everywhere this year, and I, I think rightfully so. It's a trick-taking game. It's cooperative. And the players as around the table are working together to complete these increasingly difficult missions. Um, you're going to try to make... Uh, do tricks that have certain cards in them, do them in certain, collect, do tricks in certain orders, different people can only take certain cards, that kind of thing. I wouldn't say it's a particularly innovative game because trick taking games already often use teams and so that's kind of pseudo cooperation anyway. Um, but I think the idea that these missions are, that you're accomplishing are really short. You know, you're only doing one hand per mission so you can play it as many times as you want in a row. And it provides you a different puzzle each, each time. It's super satisfying. And it's really awesome whenever you can get like a couple of these tricks, a couple of these missions linked in a row together perfectly. I really enjoy it. That is The Crew, number five. All right, we're entering the final four now. So this year, AEG has been just knocking it out of the park. It's great games year over year, okay? So this year we had Truffle Shuffle, we had Mariposas, we had Calico, Santa Monica. All right, they're all great releases from them and they just keep turning them out for me. I love it. So Santa Monica is my number four. 
This is a tableau building game where you're collecting cards to build up a beachfront boardwalk. And these cards are going to provide you with new workers that you're going to be moving around your tableau, different ways to score points at the end of the game. Sometimes they're going to have symbols on them, and depending on how you collect these symbols, you'll also be able to score points. It comes together really well. It's a game that after you finish, you're thinking about what you did wrong and wanting to do better the next time. It makes for a lot of really interesting and difficult decisions, and it's one that I really enjoyed. That is my number four game, Santa Monica. All right, my number three game is Fort. Fort is a cool deck building game from the company uh, Leader Games that gave us Root and Vast, which I both, uh, which I also really enjoy. But those are much more complex games. Those almost feel like you're playing a new game every single time because you're learning a bunch of different factions and each faction plays differently and there's all sorts of rules and all sorts of stuff going on. Fort is a much more streamlined. It's a much more focused game. Um, it gives a couple nice twists to deck building though. So each card is gonna give you two different actions, a top action and a bottom action. The top action can be followed by other players. Sometimes you have to discard a card that matches the symbol. Um, it's similar to an older deck building game called Eminent Domain in that way, which I also really enjoy. The other twist is that the cards that you don't play in the round go face up on the table in front of you. And the other players have a chance to draft cards from, from, your, your, from your cards. And so these are all friends, your, your kids, your um, building the sport, doing different things, collect, you know, eating pizza, playing with toys. And so if your friends don't feel like you're playing with them enough, they can defect to other groups of friends, which thematically is super fun, but also really tough to decide, hey, do I, if I don't want to play this card right now, you know, my, you know, Rachel might take that card from me or you know, somebody else might take it and I might not see that card again unless they put it out there and then you take that card. So a lot of fun. You're constantly having to make those tough decisions and the engine in it is really smooth. The artwork is fantastic. I love this artwork. It fits super well. It has the same artist as Root and Vast, but with kids and with kind of that playground feel, it just works super well. That is Fort, my number three. So Sonora, yeah, it's got a, that gimmicky flicking thing, but to be honest, it really works, all right? So the flicking gives you a different way to randomize things. Instead of using cards or dice that most of these kinds of games use, you're gonna be flicking onto this board. It also gives a nice spatial aspect to that part, you know, where, where your uh, disc lands is where it's going to go, right? So ultimately though, this is kind of a roll and write game in which you're completing different sections on your board. Each, uh, there's four different kind of puzzle sheets on here that you're trying to complete in different ways. And so it comes together really interestingly. I think each of these sections could be its own roll and write game, but by combining them all together, it makes the game much thinkier. It makes the game much, um, you know, sometimes it's a little hard to wrap your head around, but it makes for a really interesting and challenging game. I really enjoy it. That is Sonora, my number two game from the year. All right, my number one game of the year. What could it be? It's Calico. This was hands down the easiest decision of this entire list. Calico is so good, okay? Calico is a straight puzzle game. You're gonna be building quilt pieces that have different colors and patterns on them. And based on how you place them on this quilt board, different cats will come and sit on your quilt. Um, you get to sew buttons on them. There's also these objective spaces that you need to build certain tiles around. And with all of these different things happening, you're not gonna be able to accomplish everything you want. And so it's one of those games where you have to constantly make these difficult decisions, constantly wrap your head around where, how this space is going to affect different things on your board. It's a different challenge every single time I play it. The production value is off the charts. It has these double layer boards that your quilt pieces are gonna fit into. Things are glossy where they don't need to be glossy. The cardboard is super thick. The artwork is really charming by Beth Sobel. It's the complete package. It's a game that I do so poorly in and then I wanna play it again because I wanna do better. And it's just one of those games that just kind of captured me and it, I just think about it and how to do better next time. And it's frankly, it's just easily my favorite game of the year. It's a game that I'm gonna be playing years to come and it's another one from AEG and they just keep knocking them out. All right, so there you have it. Those are my favorite games from 2020. There were another 10, 15 games I could have put on the list that I also super enjoyed. Um, I'll make a slide about those in a second, but if there's any other games that you think fit in line with these games that you think I might enjoy, I know I missed probably a ton of games from this year because, you know, I didn't get to play with game groups and do all that, all that kind of stuff, but I'm really grateful to be able to have played all of these awesome games. I hope you can check them out too. But yeah, I think that's it, guys. All right, I'm Jordan. Thanks.
Hey there, everybody. It's Mike Delisio, and let's keep this winter spectacular moving with my top 10 solo games of 2020. This year has been a, game, a year when many people have been looking into solo gaming, maybe even more than in years past. I would say over the last few years, in general, solo gaming has become a bigger part of the board gaming hobby, but more and more people have been interested as they've had to stay more indoors and maybe not getting together with friends to play games as much. They've started to look more at solo games, and thankfully, there have been some really, really big pushes to have solo variants available, and so this year, there was no shortage of great solo games. So let's go ahead and get started. At number 10, I have Warp's Edge. Warp's Edge is what is known as a bag building game where you've got a bag that you're pulling little uh, chits out of and trying to use these to destroy alien invaders. And the ultimate goal of Warp's Edge is to try to defeat this mothership. And you have to get through a series of enemies before you can uh, oftentimes get to that mothership because they're dealing damage to you. And so it's a quick playing game. It has at just the right level of complexity for a game of this uh, length and weight. It doesn't overstay its welcome. Uh, it, it's a, a, a nice snappy little game. I've, I've liked other bag building games in the past for solo experiences like Coffee Roaster. This one feels slightly uh, different. It has a little bit more of a kind of a quick tempo to it than the other type of bag building games I've played in the past. So that is Warp's Edge. At number nine, we've got Ether Fields. Now, Ether Fields is a game that I feel like has the most potential to either go up this list or to fall off it completely. And the reason why I say that is because this is a sprawling, epic game, campaign style game. And I got this late in the year. This was actually uh, put out late in 2020. And so I have not had a chance to go through the whole campaign. However, I can say that while it is not a perfect experience, I would say it is a flawed experience, it still makes my top 10 of the year because what it does well, it does very well, and it creates an experience. This is something that a lot of games from this publisher, Awaken Realms, uh, that's something you find a lot in their games, is that there are some issues, oftentimes, rule book issues, issues with maybe even grinding, but the experience that you get out of it when it's done well and when you have that that kind of great gaming session it is so good that it pulls you through some of those other elements that maybe are less than ideal and ether fields has a very unique theme it has a very unique aesthetic and it has mechanics that i think are satisfying you do have to get through some things that are a little bit clunky less than uh, elegant but when it works when it all snaps together man th that experience is one that is just fantastic, and why it made it onto my list at number nine. At number eight, we have Tidal Blades. Tidal Blades is another kind of big, epic production. It's a little bit of a smaller experience. It's not a campaign game, but it is one that provides a very satisfying solo experience. Also, very challenging. I, Tidal Blades is one that you really have to focus on a very particular set of strategies. Now, that means that it plays slightly different than the multiplayer game. While the mechanics are relatively the same between the solo game and the multiplayer game, you really have to focus on getting ahead of your rival. You're playing against a rival character on the champion's board. And so it means that you have to maybe focus your strategies a little bit differently than you do in the multiplayer game. However, all of the things I like about Tidal Blades as a multiplayer game, I still like them in the solo game. I really like the dice uh, system in the game where you are kind of rolling dice and having to mitigate against potential dangers. I like the different areas of the, uh, uh, there's no set board, but the different islands that you go to. The game still plays the same. You just have to focus your energies and your strategies a little bit different. At number seven, I have Monumental. Now, Monumental is at heart a deck building game, but it's a deck building game that is kind of fused with a troops on the map area uh, majority style game, all right? You are playing cards in a grid and you have a three by three grid. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna choose either one row uh, or one column 
and you're going to trigger cards based on which column or row you have triggered. And those cards are going to allow you to do things on this larger map where you're going to have troops and you're going to have kind of explorers that go out to explore the map and you've got warriors that could potentially uh, defeat other, um, maybe your AI opponent that you're going after or um, NPC characters that are seated on the board at the beginning of the game. Monumental is a game that surprised me very much um, because I didn't know how this kind of connection between deck building and troops on a map would work. And it works really well. The AI system is a card-based uh, automa style system where you flip over two cards and you do a series of actions accordingly. Very, very fun game. I like Monumental a lot. <clears throat> Pardon me. At number six, we've got a much smaller scale game, but certainly no less satisfying, and that is Calico. Calico is a game themed around bringing cats to a quilt that you are creating. And it is at heart a abstract style puzzle game. And those tend to work very well as solo experiences. Calico is delightful. It's very, very quick, but boy, is it thinky. What a puzzle it presents to you every time. You have a series of scoring goals that you're trying to complete, and they basically uh, have to do with different patterns of quilts that you are creating. Certain cats like different patterns and different goals that maybe will have all different styles of patterns surrounding this particular tile or three of one type and three of a different type, things along those lines. Very simple to understand goals, but very difficult to achieve. And it plays quickly, easy setup, easy teardown, a very satisfying puzzle in a short period of time. That is Calico. At number five, I've got another space-themed game. This is Under Falling Skies. Under Falling Skies is a dice game. It is one that really kind of evokes the classic arcade game Space Invaders, if you're familiar with that game, where you've got a kind of ever-encroaching series of alien invaders, and you're trying to protect your city. And in uh, Under Falling Skies, you're doing this by dice placement. Okay, you're rolling dice and you're placing them on particular spots that can trigger different things. They might give you resources like energy. They might fire lasers and you have to manipulate these ever increasing alien invaders into particular spots where you can destroy them with a, with a missile, things along those lines. And you're also moving your excavator down to try to get access to more and more actions that you can do. Very tense, very quick playing, it uh, provides a really satisfying experience in a short period of time, and it is a really delightful puzzle. That is Under Falling Skies. At number four, we have Dune Imperium. Dune Imperium is another deck builder uh, game that is married to a different uh, mechanic, in this case, worker placement. And in Dune Imperium, you are playing against a, uh, a pair of rival AIs, opponents, that you are having to contend with. And you do this either through flipping over cards or there's also an app that you can use to simulate those card draws. And so what you're having to do is you are competing with worker placement spots, which is something that you oftentimes will find in solo worker placement games where you have to compete with spots. But there's also a combat element to this game which I think really ramps up the appeal for me. I didn't know how I was gonna like this, I didn't know how it was gonna work out, but I really do enjoy the solo experience in Dune Imperium. You have to kind of account for what would normally be intrigue cards that your opponents in a multiplayer game would play, where you might feel like you're going into a particular combat with a clear advantage, but they might come at you with a particularly powerful combat card. And, in the solo game, that is gonna be kind of simulated through turning over the, these cards that will give you a certain amount of strength that they add. So it's like they're playing an entry card. So you do have to account for that and it may feel a bit random, but that's really what happens in the multiplayer game as well, is that you can never be sure what your opponents have. And I really like that feeling of tension, of not feeling like I know what's gonna happen. So. Dude Imperium is a game that I liked in general a lot, and I think the solo experience does a really good job of replicating that tension, that anxiety, that not knowing exactly what's going to happen at any particular point. Is that spot going to be taken from me? Am I going to win this combat? That race 
to 10 points that is felt in the multiplayer game, I think is handled really well here. At number three, we have Viscounts of the West Kingdom. This is the third in the trilogy, the West Kingdom line, and I really have liked all of these games. Viscounts of the West Kingdom is another game that involves uh, deck building to an extent because you are traveling around a um, kind of a, a circular style board and you are gaining cards to add to your deck. You are also competing against an AI opponent and, and you do this through a, a series of card draws. And in Viscounts of the West Kingdom, you have four different AI opponents that you can be playing against that have their own player boards and they have their own particular thing they're trying to do. Perhaps they're trying to build uh, more aggressively or perhaps they're trying to get manuscripts more aggressively. So it's nice in that you can play against different style AI opponents. They're all using the same cards, but they're doing it in such a way that they are shifting their focus. And that's a really uh, clever uh, system for this AI. It's something that's been a hallmark of these games really for a long time, these Garfield games AI opponents, where you have very simple card draws, very easy to administer. You're not having to put a lot of time and energy into what the AI is doing. You're able to focus more on what you're doing. And they are very challenging opponents, very challenging opponents. So if you get a victory, you feel like you've earned it. Uh, a really great uh, uh, multiplayer game and a stellar solo game as well. That's Viscounts of the West Kingdom. At number two, we've got a polyomino game about cats. This is Isle of Cats. And Isle of Cats, I think, is just a delightful game all around. You have a player board, which is a boat. And essentially what you're trying to do in Isle of Cats is you are trying to rescue these magical cats off of an island before it has some type of a destructive event. And you do this by getting baskets. Really, it's a card drafting game. You're, you're getting cards that are going to give you um, particular abilities. They're going to give you different scoring uh, goals that you're going for, but they're also going to give you ways to get these cats off the island and onto your boat. And your boat is broken up into different rooms, different sections, and the cats are represented by polyomino tiles. And so when you rescue these cats onto your boat, you're trying to place them in such a way that they create families of like, of like cats, and you're trying to cover up rats that are on your boat, and you're also trying to fulfill scoring goals. What's great about the uh, solo game is that it is played against a opponent on the same board, okay? And so what's really clever is that you are round by round figuring out what color cat your AI opponent most wants. And so the most points, they'll get the most points for. And so as the game goes on, you're getting more and more information about what your AI opponent is going for. And it's all happening on one board. And that is so unique. It's very rare that I've seen anything like this. As a matter of fact, I can't think of another AI system quite like this where you and your opponent are both working off the same board. So Isle of Cats is a game that I have loved uh, from the first time I played it and it's gotten better. It certainly has not gone down in my estimation. My number two game is Isle of Cats. Finally, my number one solo game of 2020 is Dwellings of Eldervale. This is a game that I have absolutely adored. Uh, I feel like it does so many things well. It is a game that I feel like is just almost right up my alley. Like there's nothing about the game that I don't like, including the solo variant. So in Dwellings of Eldervale, this is a game where you are placing units on, the, on a modular board, a tile, a tile board. And so basically it is a worker placement game, but it also has elements of tableau building and resource management. And all of these are things that I like. In addition to that, you're playing against a ghost faction that is going to have their own units that are there on the board. And the AI system I think is really clever. You have three cards that could potentially be triggered at any time. So you have some limited information on what they might do, but you don't know exactly what's gonna happen because you have to roll a die to see which of those three cards are gonna potentially be triggered. And so you are competing with this AI opponent, they are going to spots, they are involved in combat just like a regular opponent would, but it's also very easy to administer. 
Very few rules are, are changed or even adjusted in the solo game to the multiplayer game. And I think that that's crucial in a game like this where there are so many interaction points. That's something that's hard to pull off in a solo game is a game where you have a lot of interaction points like this one. I think Dwellings of Eldervale does a fantastic job of replicating the multiplayer experience and making it easy on the solo player through simple administration of the AI system. So there you have it, my top 10 solo games of 2020. I think this was a particularly strong year and I'm thrilled with the direction that solo gaming is going and I hope it continues to grow. That's it for me. Thank you so much for your time as always and have a great day. What show? Looks like one ringy dingy, two ringy dingy. Are we live? What's up? Let's do it. Oh, we're live. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Um, well, welcome to the very, very end of the Dice Tower Winter Spectacular. I invited anyone who could make it, although people have to work and some people have to sleep and all sorts of things going on. So here's some folks who were part of it. <laughs> so here's who we could get. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't Thank a good magician, but I brought in Puppet Brian. Show and Brian Drake, yes. <laughs> <laughs> But, but listen, bef before we jump into anything else, I do. there's a lot of people who couldn't make it. A lot of people put this together. There's a lot of people put work behind the scenes. We want to say thank you to Lindsay, uh, who is the marketing director of the Dice Tower and has really, you don't know all the stuff she does behind the scenes. And yeah, it's, uh, a lot of what goes on is because of her. And then right after her, we have Kenny, who... I mean, he's not here because he just probably forgot we were doing this, um, but <laughs> he keeps the, the whole dice tower running. Uh, mm -hmm. If our lights yeah. go off in the middle of this, it's because Kenny's not here. That's, that's right. That's how that works. That's right. But we do have, you all know, Roy and Mike, they've been on NZ, have been on camera all week. Brian's been here half the time. Mm -hmm. The last you saw of Bonacore was just a few minutes ago, criticizing mm -hmm. me heavily for something that was a stupid Part thing. for the course. <laughs> What did they see a few minutes ago? Is it the TI? Yeah. Yeah, TI4. Yeah. Oh, well, it was the worst move in TI4 history. So, um, and then we have Ella, um, nice. who was in her top 10 Jerk. last night. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's morning for her. Yes. And then Sharon, who's helping us with all of our contests and stuff behind the scenes. Sharon runs Dice Tower East. Don't ask us questions about it. We don't know yet. We're still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> We're hoping, but Question. still waiting. <laughs> um, so, was there a, huh? Was this something that like did Brian break a chair when he was in the studio? What no, happened? no. So like, I'm just saying the chair in the studio is very lean backy. Like if like pro like my chair here in the office is it's in productive mode. He can't lean back. But when I sat in that one, it was like, oh, this is clearly nap mode chair. You know what I'm saying? Like, Talking about that, those it, blue ones, the blue ones. I'm just saying it was the one that was at your desk, okay? I'm just, oh, yeah, my, trying, like, desk yeah, chair. Yeah. I was trying was to explain very to him comfortable, that you, is all I was saying. I was trying to explain to him that you work horizontally. That's yeah. how you get mo <laughs> your, your most productive. Your it's like you're at on the, the ceiling. Dentist. Right. Right, 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 okay. So the sure, over. lean backy, lean backy. That's <laughs> lean a backy, you know. Can, yeah. we, can we move off the chair? All right, so. It's a scientific term. <laughs> The year is over, and up to some degree, because once we start Christmas week, the year's over. That's how it works. You mm, go, yeah. all right, through Christmas, two New Year's, and we move on. But it's, it's been a year for a lot of people, of various degrees and stuff, and I think many times the good gets lost in the bad. Uh, this is the last year I will have of being a father of unmarried children. So let me enjoy that for a couple more weeks. Yeah, I know. What do you do? I'll tell yeah, you what you, you do, Tom. I'll tell you what you do. You show up at that, that boy's house. Mm. Not gonna, no, I'm forget it. Forget it. Gotta get dark. So, yeah, but there was a lot of good things that happened this year. And, you know, in my life, I got sent off my second kid to college. You know, we, the Dice Tower stayed together this year. I'm very thankful for that. Everybody tied together. We were able to have content out all year round pretty much. I mean, we took some time off for different things. We have a now a pretty strong Australia contingent 
Um, putting stuff you, even though I almost ran him off with a horrible oh, impression. Sorry, I should call Tarrant. <laughs> That's true. I we really need to start including him. <laughs> right. Poor Tarrant. So, and we've, we've expanded to some degree, but we've also, our production, I feel, has gotten a little bit better. And we've also just, more people are online. So I'm thankful for each and every person here. Um, oh, speaking of Australia, here is Stella. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe it is Taryn. I don't know. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, that's, that's Stella. Stella. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Hi. look at that. Hello, everybody. The only festive one. The only festive one. Oh, no, Sharon's got a tree behind her, so that's all right. You know what? You know she what? must oh, have AC on. That would be in, so hot. Uh, I'm actually in the middle of my stream, believe it or not. So I'm just like... It. I knew it. I told you, we're on her stream. She's There's her five stream. streams I'm going on right streams. now. On I'm five in two channels. streams. So this is insane. So I'm in here. I'm also in here. So this is the laptop and that's the, the main stream. So I'm going to say hello and I love the uh, Winter Spectacular and hey Ella, Tom, Roy, Sharon. Do you want me to say anyone? Oh, and Mike and Roy, it's oh, Steven, Z and Brian. <laughs> Okay, hey, busy hey. with something. <laughs> I'm just Z, you were last. I yeah, you were last, Z. Okay. It was alphabetical. Oh, yeah. look at Tom. Uh, one, can't be one up. He's got to get the hat. Hi, Joy. Oh, oh nice. Christmas. I just put a Christmas tree up. I just have awesome. this up. Very, Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> All right, anyway. so a, couple of, a couple of closing things here. Our contests are still going on, at least to the end of this video. So if you right. want to jump in those, uh, quick go back and watch those. Uh, we're going to take many of the videos that were put up this week and separate them out. Some of them are already separate, but some of them are, we'll separate them out. And over the next month, you'll see them pop up. So you, if you want to watch them specifically. So I'm going to continue with the game now. And Stella, well, Stella, real quick, before you leave. Yes. Before you leave, tell us something that you liked about 2020. All right. I feel so like you I'm have just... a pretty good no thing. major. <laughs> so anyways, to my current stream, Tom asked me about what I like about 2020. Um, here it is. So I spoke, so I'm talking to both stream right this is now. So All right. bizarre. This is so <laughs> All right. Um, what I like about 2020 is um, I have the right, like I, I get closer to Ella. I do more things to the Dice Tower. Um, unfortunately, it's not, you know, uh, with the COVID situation and all, but I've got hope for 2021. And I think that I have a feeling that it is going to be good. And um, I think, yeah, I've, I don't know. I just really, really, really miss you guys. And hopefully one day we'll, we'll see you again. But still, you know, there's a lot of games, a lot of work, um, doing more stuff on Dice Tower, like No Strings Attached and Life Play Tree and so on. And that's it. Wait, so nothing else happened in 2020 you happened. want to talk about? <laughs> nothing nothing else happened. good in 2020. Nothing Pretty else. Pretty uneventful year, All right. <laughs> just well, Tom just asked me what else happening. OK. I'll <laughs> Somehow I forgot about this. So, um, yes, this okay, so I, get, I got married. I got married. So this is what I like about 2020. And having to stream on two channels at the same time, I think that's an accomplishment um, or a mess. I don't know. I don't know how you look at it. Uh, yeah, I got married to Taryn, my best friend. Yes, of course. Oh. Let's not forget that. Thanks, Tom, for reminding me of that. <laughs> Okay, nope. I'm going to sign off, everyone. Tom's got your back, Tarrant. Tom's bye. got your back. Bye, Thank Stella. You. Bye. Bye. Not you. Love you. Bye. Bye. All right, Brian, what about you? Well, I was just having my own, like, you know, Sky News moment where my kids That's just true. dusted. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm just going to own it. No, for us, it's been obviously a crazy year, um, but there's always things to be thankful for and always things to be uh, joyful for, of course. You know, the kids are healthy, family's healthy. Um, but as well, we were able to even continue to, uh, as far as our regular career goes, um, do digital shows when we could do digital and we were able to do some live and we were able to, to kind of scope forward for what things are happening in the future and, and hopefully plan out some things. It's all trending positively. Now on the gaming side, we played a ton of games, um, Carl and I here and uh, played just a ton and ton and ton, reviewed a bunch and then uh, expanded kind of more of our uh, reviews and things. I also enjoyed the heck out of hosting or guest hosting board game breakfast. So that was uh, that was fun. I don't know if the audience enjoyed it or not, but I did. I, mean, <laughs> I suppose that's one way or the other, you know. But um, and uh, at the beginning of the year, getting to go down for the cruise that was great, and then uh, and then being part of Winter Spectacular was really really fun. So just so many uh, awesome things uh, to to be thankful for for sure. 
What about you, Ella? Well, this year was a lot of first. So I left my teaching job. I've been teaching for 20 years and I'm now full time in the industry. And I thought I was going to lose my job because of COVID. But actually, we had the best year because I work for a distributor. Games are like 200 percent in our country, in my country. So a lot of people are gaming, which is good. Um, I joined the Dice Tower, which was pretty good also this year. And so that's a new thing. Um, I love working with Mark and Lindsay. So they're the ones I talk to regularly. I hate working with all other people from here. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> but they're like, Mark is the nicest person ever. <laughs> like I'm so, I'm, I'm right. so blessed that I'm working with him because I, I really love him. <laughs> I know off the list, naughty. I'm just kidding. There's not enough room on this list. I filled it up with someone else. <laughs> too, many, well, too many letters in their last name i know or you you, you already have a stella and ella is like mm -hmm. another one no <laughs> but anyway um that was good um um i really enjoyed that my son was home the whole time he i don't know if he enjoyed it but i did because that was <laughs> i rarely see him if he when he's at school so that was pretty good but that was it yeah pretty good what about you sharon um, well, as, as some of you probably know from reading um, my bio on, on the Dice Tower website, my husband and I are big travelers and we love to travel. And the unfortunate thing about COVID is that did, did sort of damper uh, several trips we had, but we did get to take the Dice Tower cruise this year and we had a ball. We just had a most wonderful time. Um, I enjoyed meeting so many Dice Tower fans and gamers and um, for a long time, people have been telling us how great it is. And so to experience that was definitely a highlight um, of the year for us. Um, and a another thing, um, you know, even though we, we can't get together in person, um, I've been doing a lot of online gaming and um, we have a, a friend in Austria um, who I've, uh, we've started gaming with on the weekends and that's been really fun and also some friends from other conventions and it's not the same as being together in person obviously but even so it's time together and that's what's been so wonderful is is just you know having that time to share with them and uh, also play some awesome games together and our newest uh addition to the dice tower full-time mike what about you well i think that's been probably what's been the most uh impactful memorable thing from this year for me is really being here for a full year and a similar situation to ella where i left teaching for about 20 years and um you know this has been in many ways you know a a uh, a difficult year for everybody because the things that many things we love to do have been impacted but i have been so thankful that in a year like this i've also been in a lot of ways able to live a dream uh and to to do something that i love with people that i've come to love that uh, have treated me so well have accepted me as one of the group uh it really means a lot and 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 this year has been really special even in the midst of everything that's been happening, uh, I really have been uh, grateful for the opportunity that I've had here. And it's, uh, it's just been great. I mean, I, 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 I have nothing but, but good feelings for uh, everything that's happened since I've been here. So that's, that's me. So sweet. And Mike's partner in crime, Roy. What? Um, yeah, so this year's been super hard for a ton of people. And going into all of this, we weren't sure how the board game industry was going to shake out. And I'm just really thankful for how when tough times and things like that happen, everybody in the community has kind of banded together. And like, there's we did daily chats trying to reach out and talk to people there in the community to help them overcome things, especially when things were like super hard. And things are still hard, but everybody's banding together. The, the industry is still making board games and things are going great and i feel like here in the dice tower we've just all grown closer together and had to do tons more things that we never did before figure out how to do more streaming things and bringing in remote people from all over the place 
All of Board Game Media had to do a lot of that pivoting and figuring out how to make that stuff work. And then just all of the teamwork together, like like passing things off to each other here in the office and like figuring out how to make things work. I've just really enjoyed how much we've bonded together as a team and been able to make all of these things happen. And I, I, I know that our community and people in all of our live streams and our chats, it's just been so fun interacting with everybody and helping each other make it through it. Cause you know, we're here making content for you guys and hopefully that's helping you guys out with not being bored for all of these different things. But then also like you guys interacting back with us saying, oh man, I'm excited about this game and talking about games and just keeping your mind off other things going on in the world. Just helping you, I guess, have a little mental stability through all of this, just being together as friends. So I've been really thankful for the board game community as a whole and the Dice Tower. Roy is very positive all the time. Even here in the office, the place would be burning <laughs> down and Roy's like, we got this. Uh, right. He's, he's currently running. He's currently running this stream and he is definitely <laughs> head video editor run keeps this whole thing running and we're very appreciative of that yep. on another note mr bonacor <laughs> on another note i'm always positive um so obviously yeah, I yeah. Use... when you're pulling a knife on me for that twilight imperium thing yeah <laughs> come on now <laughs> i'm always positive anyway um so you know huge life changing event for me this year you know retirement from being the president of stronghold games uh, obviously uh that was big and very good and very positive and i was that was planned years in advance so that wasn't wasn't something that snuck up on me uh, and that led to my strengthening of my relationship with the dice tower uh now being able to host uh co-host with tom and z once a week board game breakfast on thursdays love doing that really is one of the highlights of my now boring week no no i'm kidding i have a great week regardless <laughs> so that's just a lot of fun to add that into that and then in general, the whole idea that I now uh, have strengthened relationships with people that I were not either seeing a lot, like my old friends from New Jersey, uh, haven't been able to see them, haven't been able to game with them, haven't been able to really talk much with them, now getting together with them constantly on Zoom. And then with people that I really, some of them I did barely knew, on like my happy hours that I've been doing twice a week, you know, during this entire time. Sharon is there like every time we do this. And, uh, you know, Sharon and I didn't didn't get to know each other all that well, even though I was down here, but we, we spent a little bit of time together down here. But now we get together twice a week and with another dozen or two dozen people every time we get together. And it's just been such a great thing to, to keep contact with people throughout this very trying time. Um, and hopefully it's been good for everybody. It's been good for me, certainly. Then the very first full-time employee of the Dice Tower, Mr. Z Garcia. Technically you, but I get what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I think the, the best thing uh, about this year is I, uh, I haven't put on a pair of pants since March. <laughs> uh, and I love it. I, cool. I feel so free. It's mm -hmm. a very liberating feeling. I don't know Certainly. how I'm going to get back to it. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to have to have a talk with the fellows when I start going back into the office just to <laughs> let them know, hey, this is the new me, and you're yeah, going to have right. to accept that. No, I'm kidding, <laughs> of course. Um, I put on pants sometimes. Oh. No, what I'm uh, – you know, two things, actually, that come to mind. One, I've, I've done a lot of two-player gaming this year, which was kind of what I did when I began board gaming. I was doing a lot of two-player gaming. And to the point that I would go to a game store, like a physical game store, remember those, and um, pick up a game, and, and the first thing I would look at, other than anything else, would be at the, the player count. And if it said, like, three to five, it would go right back on the shelf. I didn't, I didn't even look at it if it wasn't for two. So I've done that a lot. The other thing has been an interesting side effect of working largely remotely, and that is that whenever I end up going to the office and the guys are there and I need to go in for something, there is this sort of silly, joyous conversation that springs forth. No matter what everybody's kind of doing, what I went to go pick up, what the, the guys are into. And man, I always leave that place with a smile on my face. I really do. I think we have a fantastic in-office team. Everybody is just full of joy. Everybody's funny. Everybody's silly. Um... I, I love when I get to pop in because it's so rare now I'll pop in 
and it's a it's a it's a boost of energy it really is so that's been an interesting kind of again side effect of of not being there all the time and i i just think we have a fantastic team i'm, I'm blown away by you guys well i'm pretty happy for everything i already done my top things of the year but i'm i agree with z i agree with everybody it's been really good um lest we get too sappy here um <laughs> we're gonna end this whole thing here uh with a video that we put together that you all sent in submissions of funny or weird moments that happened on the dice tower this year um i laughed a lot watching this mostly everybody else in it so we hope you enjoy that so Roy's going to play that in just a second, and then that's it for it. that. But before we go, once again, thank you to everybody who's here with me. Thank you to the folks who couldn't make it in but did a fantastic job putting this together. And thank you to each and every one of you who watched it. Some of you didn't stop watching, and you probably should get up and you know move to another room at some point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but we're thankful for that. We're not done yet. We're starting... There's still a few videos going up over the course of this week. You can vote on the People's Choice Top 100. That will start in January. And Marble Racing starts on Monday. So we'll see nice. what happens there. Yes. Yes. I was going to send you a bowling ball as my marble. But mm -hmm. <laughs> Chipping would have been too expensive. All righty. Merry Christmas to everyone. Happy New Year. Happy everything. Enjoy this video. We'll see you all soon enough. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays. Bye -bye. Happy, holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you. Happy holidays. I'm only one away from the people. We're Who's the, the people's champion now? <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> what do you, you think I was going to do? I don't know. For all I know, you think that's a jackhammer. <laughs> Unsafe work environment. Um. <laughs> the only problem I have with the witness is if you have one person at the table who is... I'm trying to think of a, a polite way to say this. A dummy. Ahead, I'm not helping you. <laughs> <laughs> One person can kind of throw the game off, I found. Somebody who, can, who likes to reinterpret the truth. That's correct. They're like, that's what I heard. But uh, this is what I'm going to tell you. Yeah. But uh... I think what they meant to say was. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite, I, I, I hinted at it before, but my absolute favorite thing in Witness is when someone has been whispered something and they've clearly got it wrong or botched it and they know they've got it wrong or they can't remember it. They lean over and they whisper to you like, he was tall or something. I and, the, and and he just gives you this garbage yes. and you're looking at him like, <laughs> really? Like, okay, cool. I guess I'll go into the exam section now. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I've totally had that happen to me. Where somebody <laughs> says, like, something about his... He was talking about a hat or something. And then it, it was, there were colors on it. I don't know. Anyway, my guy wears a belt. And I'm like, great, thanks. <laughs> Glad you remembered your bit, you know? Mm. Uh, uh, one well, key is, is this me. Is it's a little bit one. of... Is this me. is It's a little bit of... Is this me. is It's a little bit of... Six dozen and one is a well-known expression. Six dozen and one, yeah. This is boring. What Rude. The five. I mean, the, the, the mechanic pretty well been established in road from this i'm so pleased with his yeah that. his true. his that's astute so, comments I, my astute comments i i think he means astute or austere but that's not right uh, you know what six dozen and one in a road i'll say i'm wrong on this one so i'll give z some credit on this one credit Check i'm not saying we're gonna listen to him road number, that's my number three road. tom the comment said Z doesn't even like the game. He just wants Mike to go off on Tom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, folks, you know what? You're right. At the end of the day, I don't have to outrun the bear. I just have to outrun the other runners. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm coming out of this baby on skates. Did he call me a bear? Dice Tower Judgment. Horrible, terrible, unfathomable evil. However... We turn a card over to see what happens to that character. It's this a modifier, is a modifier, and that stinks. A minus one. A move three, so I'll go one, two, three, and then I've got an attack two. Unfortunately, it's the best I can do. Uh, but if I get a plus one here, that would take care of that. Do it. Oh, come on. Right, you well, can't I, even hit a rock. I got it out of my deck. He swung. He's like. Oh. 
Then I'm going to smack that rock for three. Oh, no. Did you just miss I again? Missed. Yeah, and now you missed I'm missed a rock? The, I missed a rock again. I'm doing a one-two punch. All right, so it's an attack two and then an attack one. <laughs> and I gain a... I've got two chances at this stupid rock. And then uh. I, gain, I gain an experience <laughs> as long as the attack hits twice. All right, so here's the first one. Attack two. What? Come on! Uh, I need to sh reshuffle. I like right. to point out <laughs> that that is the only card in that deck, except the curses, which yeah. haven't shown up. And you've drawn it three times this game. I'm well aware. <laughs> I'm well, well aware. But I still have one more chance at this because it's a one-two punch, not just a one-one punch. All right, I'm taking a short rest here. It's a one-two punch. Oh, All right. oh, oh. Decks of cards are way less random. Huh? I said good thing decks of cards are way less random. Right. They are way less random, and yet Mike is draw It's insanely. All right. But what watch are you doing me, now? What? It's, I have a second attack. Hang on. Oh, my heal card. I just lost. Oh, we're out. All right. If this is a plus two, we can at least knock that out. I had two chances. I'm standing Wait. next to the rock, by the way. I just want to make that clear. I'm adjacent to the rock. I had two swings at it. I'm, I'm getting a plaque bait at this. Mike can't even hit a rock. I don't know what's going on here. All right. Well, I was supposed to also plus one to push, so I can push it three. Um... All right, so it's a three attack now. No, it's not. Um, Are you? I, wait, did you take the one out of your deck last time? You got, oh, what? Oh my. All right. All right. I, I, what? How? 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 How are you so bad at drawing cards? I'm bad at drawing cards. Uh, but I do get to push it. <laughs> attack three plus two uh, and gain a... a I'm going to take that experience right now. Um, so I'm doing a five attack right here. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of cards in this deck. Come on. <laughs> this deck is filled with nothing. Show but us the worse. rest of your cards. I wanna make sure it's like not. Oh, more like a plus one? Like this plus one? <laughs> like this plus one? There's one of those. Uh, like that plus one and that plus one? Oh, come Even on. Even the plus zero. You notice this card never came up. Not once. <laughs> There's a doubling. That is the worst luck I've seen in many a day. This is crazy. That is hilarious. Now, someone said in the comments that it should not have been necessarily shuffled in as soon as it was drawn. Uh, that's at the end of a round and stuff. Okay. I get that, but you still inordinately drew it. <laughs> I drew like crazy. That you're a bad shuffler. I'm a horrible shuffler. We go. My number 10, Polyhedron, Polyomino Game. My number 9, Polygon, Polyomino Game. My number 8, Polytheistic, Polyomino Game. My number 7, Polytechnic, Polyomino Game. My number 6, Polynomial Game, Polyomino Game. Number 5, Polysyllabic, Polyomino Game, Polygenetic, Polyomino, three polygamist, polyomino game, two polyester, polyomino game. And my number one polygraph, I mean polyomino game, is the most complex on this list. And I don't even know. I'm saying, yeah, let's roll some dice. I'm just going to, wait, I need big numbers, right? Let's go for big numbers. I don't know what I want. That is fantastic. Four dice, right? Twinkle, twinkle. I only rolled three. That is amazing. I only rolled Trouble. three. No, no it's three. three. It's, it's definitely three. three. That is unbelievably that bad luck. Cannot have gone better. Oh my word! They can't even see how bad it now, is. Now the good news is it's all ones, by the way. Now the good news is that Bruno, you can't get any better, right? Uh, he tends to be more, you know, more most of the it's time. Amazing. Yeah. A very good friend, I'll put it yes. that way. Yeah, yeah. Not doesn't throw tantrums. No. Doesn't question my he friendship. He's a good listener. He's a good listener. Yeah, does not right. wear ridiculous clothing. Right, right. Doesn't make I, it all about him. Right, right that's yeah. a, that's basically that's a, that's it. That's a relationship. It's giving, right? And at that's the good. end of the day, he is a good designer. Right. And other people sometimes not are sometimes right. not. Not easy. No, that's good. So there you go. That is what <laughs> I think about Tom Vest. That's a beautiful <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what were we talking about? <laughs> oh, Mosquito Show. Yeah, Mosquito right, Show. Right. That's the one. This one here, uh, they are saying it's going to be easy to swap people in and out. Okay. The only thing about that, swapping people in and out, I go like, is that really what I want to do? Though? If I start the adventure oh, with I like you, that. I like, want you to stay. Like friends. I right. like to do that with friends. Yeah. Swap them out. <laughs> swap new right. ones in, you know? Yeah, I think... Uh, Actually, that does not bother me. No? I like Good. playing the game.
<laughs> That's why this all works, everybody. That's why this works. No, what I'm doing this thing. It's gonna be people, then Z, then me. Oh, I see how it is. <laughs> Tom Vassals is the one that matters. How many top 100s have you done? That is the opposite. It's my 15th. It's actually not that. Top 100 like board games? No, lists. This is my 15th list. I've done a lot of lists of a top 100 Tom, things. Tom, we need to uh, make one thing clear: is that it does not go in that order. Oh, what is the order? How many times have you messed up a live stream? <laughs> Am I first? Yeah, yes. it's it's in the order from from the. Got viewer it. You're right, I, and I even said that. You did. So yeah. the most important is you. That's right. Here we go. Follow that one. <laughs> rude. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Caveman. <laughs> Okay, well, listen, <laughs> I feel like you're trying more now. <laughs> really? I have never played this game, so I'm assuming it's a very historical <laughs> charged game. Um, it looks good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what can I say? I'm dying inside. Uh, yeah, it's great. Number four. On my boat, stay away from my boat, and you. I say, I'm, that's my boat. Yeah, but you won't do it. So, no, because so, I'm gonna be with so you. So then we're on the, on the on the boat. If I got you on there, then we have to work. Because I'm gonna get on there with you, so you won't kill me. <laughs> I don't want you to kill me. That's about as close as I'm gonna get to co-op is you're riding on the boat with me, trying to get off the and island. And plus, and plus, if Grant hates one of us, at least he won't kill us all because he likes the other one. You know, well, I'm my trying husband to, trying he, to survive. He loves to hop on my. Sounds like yeah. I look like I have the way to go. I'm going to fight to get the boat in there, so he yes, likes to I take do. a ride on yes. my boat. But yes, that's as I close do. as I'm going to get to co-op, but Survive is great. Yeah. We love it. We laugh till we cry. Yes, I we think do. families will love it because yeah. you get a chance to, you know, be a little mean, yeah. but still, you know, in the guise of fun. And it's it's wonderful. Yeah. So, Survive, number seven. Survive. <laughs> All right. That's good. I, yeah, I think if you, had, I if, you had a single, if you had a single guy in Survive, it would be way too mean. Yeah. Because yeah. you have a bunch of pieces. You yes. can feed one to a shark, and it's like, oh, but it's fine. You can keep going. Yeah. 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 But you don't want to lose none of your men, though. That's the problem. That's why you get on her boat. With, with, yeah, with no, you got to go in there knowing some of those people are going to die. Just be at yeah. peace with that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get to peace with that. No. Yeah, they, they're someone who's going to go. They're not going to all make it. And then it's so funny because we give them <laughs> names, too. We yeah. give them names. Like, Larry, gone. Yeah. Larry is gone. Yeah. Yeah, we love that. <laughs> You don't stay up kid. You get too attached. That's why you don't. I get attached. Any people. I get yeah. attached. I get attached. I can't have my guys go down. I'm totally at peace with knowing that some people aren't going to make it. Well, see, I sent them to the <laughs> island, so it's my responsibility to get them out of there. I feel bad about that. <laughs> Sit on that crazy island. Well, that's not your number seven. So what's your number seven? Is you that know, your number seven? I'm already sent them to that crazy. I got to get them back. <laughs> I've got a fundamental. I've got a couple of fundamental issues on this, and I've seen it for about 12 seconds. Number one. How is that going to work? If it's if what you're trying to do is keep from making a mess, you're just going to have mess sliding all over. A, now, a, Mike, a this is so thing. that you could. This is so you could put this in your car and put the burger down while it's driving. So oh, you take a cup bite holder. And stick it okay. in this thing. I'm back in. I'm back in. If it's a this cup is a holder, burger thing. holder, but this doesn't have a flat side. I don't think it's made to be held to eat out of. I think it's like to put on a table so you can put a burger in and it says so that mess those, free. Those... Okay. Number five. I mean, number four. Who knows what number we're on? Just like I can't count the number of actual plays I've had. I can't count the, the number of the, the list that we're on. Oh, Tom is the worst Just thing ever. Look at ah! it. It's, not, <laughs> like it's too big. Too no, small your head. head is too big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're looking insane right now, trying to hide your <laughs> face, neck. <laughs> This 1994 film won the Academy Awards for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Visual Effects, and Best Film Editing. Uh huh. The Mount Kilimanjaro.
in this continent is a dormant volcano. Oh, no, no, no. Mount Kilimanjaro in this continent a dormant volcano is. Division cell of metaphase the undergoing is cell a when microscope light a under visible normally is the name of this process originates from two greek words the first meaning light and the second meaning putting together robinson crusoe uh to do this you just need to email us at contest at dicetower.com and in the subject line put the word death as in d-e-a-t-a really <laughs> well don't don't really me you're the one who did this all right so, death. Um, and Ignasi, what are we doing here? We are going to play Cannibal Island. And this is uh, apparently the most uh, difficult scenario to win. We did a poll on our Facebook group and people were, were voting and they wanted to see me dead playing this scenario. So, you are in a trap with me right now. The whole internet is, internet is watching and it will be very difficult. But, uh, well, we will see. So, so why were you upset that I had death as my subject line? Because it was spoiler. <laughs> we, have, we, are, we are playing three-player variant because there's three of us. In the game, there's four characters. So we need to uh, discard the one uh, at the very beginning. We have a carpenter, explorer, cook, and a soldier. We definitely need soldier. So we are not discarding soldier. I uh, want to be the cook. We, you want to be a cook. Okay. Z. Uh, I think we should get rid of the soldier. No, no, no. We are not <laughs> getting rid of the soldier. No. Okay. I don't want to be alpha player, but no. Played it once by myself, and this publisher's known for solo. And I played it twice by myself, and I, I just said, like, I don't, I don't, I don't know why I don't like this game. Maybe it's just a better multiplayer game. Let's try it. And I did, and I was done. And I sold it that weekend, and I got a lot for my return on that investment. And that is Wingspan. Uh, Wingspan, this is the thing about Wingspan that I, <laughs> I truly, truly, and I, I shouldn't have put it as a hate, but I definitely don't like, this is what I just Not, don't like. This is what I just don't like. I don't feel, and, and a lot of engine building type games usually get flat, you know, like they are loved or hated, right? Engine building game, oh my goodness, oh my. We God. don't want to be associated with no, this. No. Uh, uh, all engine building <laughs> games, they're hit or miss, right, for some people. Yes. And there's one right here is a huge hit for others. But I just like different ones. And I was like, I I, I mean, I understand, like, the little engine building and the birds <laughs> and stuff like up? that. Do I, I need like, to help you? I like the components. I like, like I said, I like the birds and how it's thematic. But I don't necessarily, so my oh, my God. I don't necessarily care He's about kidding. themes all the time. And that was the thing. Oh, guys, it's 1 p.m. Let me, let me look up some... Uh... Let's end strong, shall we? Let's end with something strong. A hard-hitting question. Huh? Huh? I don't... I would now show you my juggling skills. Like it? Okay, let's put I'll it right in back. the block. The year before that, and three the year before wow. that. Wow. Three. And that was three and then, then nine. Then nine, then fifteen. And then in 73. And wow. Okay, well, here's the thing. Why, I still, what is this game you suddenly hate? I don't hate it. I still really like this game. I feel like, <laughs> other than Melody, who's at college, and Jason, nobody in this entire city plays this game besides me. And it's a two-player game, so I need someone wow. to play this game with. Um, <laughs> What is going on right now? What the heck is going on? What's up, buddy? Oh, we're going to go. Wow. It scared the crap out of me. Man. <laughs> and I knew he was going to do it because I asked him. I would like to apologize to all our viewers for their medical bills to treat oh. uh, destroyed eardrums. Wow.
the joy on Kenny's face, blowing out my eardrums. I'm not going to forget Yay! that, Kenny. Thank That's you, fantastic. On. We are so sorry, Did folks. you hear that through that, Bugs? Yes. Are you kidding? Can you hear anything at all, Roy? We're so sorry. No. We're sorry. <laughs> I uh, I think I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> anyway, did I wow. say the name of the game yet? Didn't say the name of the game yet. Okay, so they're still guessing. It's a collectible game. Okay, collect. Wait, I don't even. I'm, I've completely lost. Magic the Gathering. I don't no, know. It's Marvel oh. Dice Masters or oh. PC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're sorry, folks. I'm not sorry. Kenny, Kenny, Kenny is howling on the other side of the door there. <laughs> Z looked like a scared cat. Yes, that was freaky. I wasn't expecting that at all. I'm like, the house is burning down. That's I, it. I, That's what's yeah, going I on. I thought there was some issue with the house. I forgot how loud that thing was. Jeez, what is wrong with you? Why would you ask him to do that? Ruining to be clarifying, if you're watching this later when it was going on, we just funded our Kickstarter. We're very excited. Yes. Especially I'm, Kenny. You're right. I'm very nervous. I'm glad you didn't have access to and the water excited. Cannon. Mostly nervous. <laughs> now I'm just scared someone's going to jump through a window. Right. <laughs> That's all I asked to happen. We'll mm. see. It's Kenny. <laughs> that was the first mistake. <laughs> yeah. Putting Kenny in charge. I did open that door. Uh, I apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all right. right. So I still like the game a lot. 